doing here? Okay, back with another live stream. I mean, a not live stream, sorry. That's what I'm used to saying. But I, st I still can't uh, stream. I can only record videos with OBS. I haven't tried to fix it again. I've been trying to get work done, and I want to make the videos, you know, while it works. So I just keep doing it this way. When we get back to work on the Net Pro Max, and uh, <clears throat> let's see. Um... Now I'm going to get on the 10 inch tablet and uh, we'll go ahead and switch over to it on the KV, well, my KVM switch and log in. It's been, you know, it's a server, it's my server right now, so it's always running now. Okay, now I'm going to type start it, and that'll get me into the, <clears throat> well, actually, it's a graphical chooser for, uh, oh, wait, let's see what it does. Can't remember. Yeah, okay, it gives me a graphical chooser, but I'm kind of confused about what this thing does. This, I still can't even remember if this, this was already here before I installed that, uh, switch desk application I think and I made this one that says dawn okay it says last access uh, January 21 okay uh, 1901 39 2019 okay that's the time and this one said default says Monday, January 21. Monday, January. Yeah, it would be the same day. And this is 1458. Yeah. But it doesn't matter which one I select. It still logs me in as root. <clears throat> and I got to thinking. You can do new session. And I got to thinking, well, maybe this would choose a different desktop. But I thought it was just, you know, you could add a different user. That's what I thought that was for. Because that's what, you know. Of course, normally you either there's only two ways. Either the user's already there, that I've ever seen these these uh, login GUIs, or you have to type in the domain. You have to type in your name every time. I mean, you might be able to. The only way I know I know of that you don't is if you tell it to just auto login and it'll to, to you know whichever user and then it'll just do that. And I actually had that turned on, and I turned it off. I wonder if that's what made it quit going into dawn. Maybe I need to turn that back on because every time I log in now, I'm in root. But it does auto log in. All I do is click on it. I don't have to type in a password. So I need to. But what I was thinking is what if I made a new session? I call it mate. How will I get rid of that session, though? I may be sorry I did that. Yeah, because I don't know how to get rid of them. I don't want that in there. I don't think that's what that's for. I think that's for users. Yeah, that's for users. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, I don't think it actually matters which one I choose. Let's go with default because if I if I can't if I don't think I need anything but well I thought I would always want to be able to log in sometimes as root and sometimes as it went straight into root. Okay. Um, well, that's something that I won't worry about right now. I, I think I know what to do. Well, let's go ahead and look. Let's see, yeah, connected to the. See, we don't have our desktop background. I don't like that. And we keep, always get that little notice saying there's a problem. Then when I click on it, it says there's no problem. Um, <clears throat> users and groups. I believe is what I want. Well, there's eight updates since this morning. It should have uh, updated, you know, at 3 a.m. But there's eight updates. I don't want to do them right now, <clears throat> so I'm not going to do anything with that. Users, uh, groups, this is not the selection where you do, uh, the area where you do, now this is, well, let's see. Now this is not where you do auto login. I don't see the user Don. 
There it is down there. Yeah. Let's look at his properties. This is where you can just set, you know, how the password, if it expires, if you want to change the password. And all that stuff. What what groups you're a member of. That generally you just I mean, you can, most of the time you can leave all that on default. But um uh, Login window, that's what I installed. <clears throat> now, this is the standard app that came with it. Okay, so this may be it. Yeah. Background. User share backgrounds. Default ping. Let's see if we can change that here and make it work. It didn't work. Yeah, there's the one I want. I like that one, but it's not working, so let's try something else. There's a lot. There's actually more to choose from than I actually want to. Well, it, it doesn't. I'm not going to. We're still on the Edwada theme. I don't like the Edwada theme. Other monitors. This is kind of a quicker way to change stuff. That setting, uh, uh, user, uh, that might have been from Mate. I just realized that. Maybe that's why it didn't take effect. Yesterday I was changing the themes and it wasn't doing anything. But this is the XFCE theme changing way to change themes because it says, look at all the XFCE. <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't have the same themes. <coughs> well, that didn't change it right away. Traditional, okay. I remember that one being okay. So, um, the icons are probably fine. I'm going to leave them as they are. I don't know if it's going to do anything. I'm beginning to think I may want to. If I have too many buggy things that don't work quite right, it's actually, it just feels like a buggy machine, and I wonder what else might not be working right. And I may reformat it. Okay, yeah, automatic, allow manual login. Oh, that's off. Hide the user list. That should be on. And then automatic log on. Now, see, I took that out. I had Dawn in there. That should just, it, I would think then you wouldn't have to. Let's do that because I'd rather do that than automatically log on to. Um, root and then these settings just general settings or whatever hid DPI support for pixel density and retina displays well I don't have one of those but everything seems fine on the display so I won't bother with that panel indicator host name accessibility battery you don't have a battery on a desktop machine yeah that's all fine so I'm going to have Dawn in there like that. <clears throat> and then hide the user list. No, I don't want that hidden. How do you change it? I wonder if you could... I don't see anything about you know adding and removing users. I think that little graphic window is... Um, I just realized... Um, that I can use the remote desktop app. I'm on the camera. Well, I'll go ahead and reboot it, and I'll turn on the remote desktop after I, when I reboot. So let's just see what that does. Oh, there's yeah, there's something else I want to look at, but we'll, first let's. Uh, well, no, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and turn on the remote desktop. I could be showing you what I'm doing here. 
I forgot that you couldn't see that. I forgot I wasn't doing remote desktop. That's usually how I always do it if I possibly can. And so, okay. I still haven't set up that part there. May not. I may not want to. After all, it, I've already spent two days plus, well, three really trying to straighten this, getting this logon screen working the way I wanted it. Of course, I mean it's a learning experience. That's for sure. Uh, you sometimes you don't know what you can and can't do till you try to do it. But um, I could have already reformatted. That's the thing. I've been done. Ah. Oh. I'm really kind of mixed up today, I think. <clears throat> I keep doing everything just a little bit off from what I really want to be doing. Okay. Connect. And I've discovered, I mean, it. well, I, it's not the worst thing, uploading videos. Um, it is... I just start up, up as soon as I get on the computer I start uploading and then you know the time I'm kind of ready to you know I look over get get woke up look over emails and stuff like that and then by that time they're generally done uploading and I can you know like kind of put in the descriptions and stuff and then start work eat, then eat lunch and then start working but uh, but I sure do miss I like um uh, I don't like having to do that, you know, if you live stream, it's already uploading what, by the time you're done making your video. But also, I miss that feeling of that you're doing a live stream. I always loved live concerts, and I love mixing live concerts, and I mix sound for bands. And so, kind of gives me that same feeling, only even better because I'm the, I'm the show and the, and the uh, audio video tech at the same, both, you know. So, I, I like that. So, i got to figure out all well, that, and it's, you know, it's a, it really is a pain uploading it's it's still another thing you have to do, and it does take extra time. So here I am, no desktop background, and um, I'll go ahead and go back into. Um, I think it was a login. That's how I found it. Yeah, login window. This is where I was at, and I went through and uh, changed the traditional OK thing, but I don't see it. It it should just happen. Uh, so I'm wondering if something's broke because because of the desktop background not working. I changed it and didn't do a thing. And uh, <clears throat> and there was no problem with any of that at first. I wonder if I broke it here trying to fix these th commands I ran the other day. Okay, I, I allow manual login was turned off, so I'm gonna leave it like that. Maybe that's why I'm stuck always logging into root. I'm thinking, and then I put I I had originally Dawn in there as automatic login. And that's the other, I just thought, well, I was able to get in, I was able to pick default was root and dawn was dawn. That's the way it was. So, let's see if that, I swear it was, anyway. And then this is the other settings that I didn't actually change. <clears throat> so, uh. Make sure, yeah, we're on desktop, Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I finally finished my cough drop. I had to get a cough drop before I started this video. I was coughing too much to talk. So I've been smacking on that this whole time. Now, what I got, I remembered during the night and the morning was uh, <clears throat> I took a screenshot. You know, when I installed that um, Switch Desk app, that I thought might give me a, a GUI login screen <coughs> besides the, what I have there that doesn't let me change the desktops or anything. Uh, I, uh, and maybe that is switch disk and uh, maybe that, I kind of think, maybe that is, I didn't have, um, boy, my memories, I guess I should go back and watch my videos and find my own videos and find out what tech I've been doing. Maybe that is the switch disk. It must be the switch. I mean, common sense, I mean, 
that's what I've, I've that's the only login screen I've got in that so that and that's the last thing I did was install switch desk so that must be it but it won't do what I thought it would do well it doesn't support mate desktop so I guess that's why it doesn't maybe there would be other desktops to choose from if it if I had one installed that it supported I know it doesn't support it because I tried the commands over and over and it just doesn't it, it doesn't do it <clears throat> okay so because um, you can just type in the terminal window you know like which desktop you want to start type switch desk space you know xfce or you tried mate it don't work xfce does actually that sets it as the default desktop is what it does when you type that command anyway uh, when i was installing it it said uh, it was moving some file to the switch desk folder and so i had a screenshot of it And uh, I'm looking at my notes that I wrote down here while I'm trying to talk. Yeah, and so maybe it moved it out of the, it moved it, you know, and which would make sense to get that to take over. So all the work I was doing yesterday trying to make Plymouth work wouldn't work with it, that uh, configuration file in the wrong place. So um, it might be easier to find stuff with that. I don't think I have any uh, file manager besides the default one. You know, KJ, at, oh, Thunar. <clears throat> at least Thunar can do, well, I'm in as root, though, so I got root privileges. That's right. Anyway, Thunar I like better than KJ, I think. Depends on what you're trying to do. Let's see. One of them will do... Uh, well, you can show hidden files, which I might need to do. One of them will do a twin panel, actually. This one won't. I think the other one does a twin panel. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> let's uh, open up another one. I didn't know I was way over, way over there at the le end. Let's get at the beginning here. Oh, I can... Well, I could just open it. There's an icon for it down there. Uh-oh. Now we're having trouble with... Keyboard not working right. Okay, so oh, that's the file manager. There we go. That'll be KJ. 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 I think there's only two on here. Actually, I think. Oh, that's Thunar. Oh. Okay, so let's do the search again. I do have that FTP, but anyway, KJ see if it I think it's the one that will do twin panels that way when I copy a file or move it I can do that it's not very not as good as a real twin panel file manager but extra pain I think that's it yeah so let's try that we'll close the uh, other one because this one Oh, yeah, it does show hidden files, and I may have oh, side panel settings and stuff. Okay, let's go back over here and see if you can show hidden files. You may not be able to do that in uh, this one here. Yeah, you can. Okay, <clears throat> good. So now I'm going to, this machine does you know, it's not a real powerful machine, so we'll close everything we're not using. Okay, now, um... Screenshots. That's what I want. Are you gonna open? <clears throat> there we go. I made a little folder for my screenshots yesterday. I think it was. Now let's look at the screenshots and see. I really need to copy these. Uh, back them up. Oh, it's not big. I thought it looked awful small. The desktop switcher is a tool which enables. That's okay. Yeah, users to easily switch between various desktops at, that they have installed. Please select the default desktop for the system XFCE or system default. Okay. I think I uh, selected XFCE. 
that's what I want to use. Okay, now this is the logs, a screenshot of the logs. I was trying to figure things out. I looked on my machine. I couldn't remember where I took my screenshot of that note of what was going on. I just re realized I was doing that on remote terminal, I'm pretty sure. So it's on my machine. So, uh, yeah, so desktop switcher <clears throat> is the thing that I installed. Switch desk is the command for it. <clears throat> okay, so. <coughs> but in order to... <clears throat> In order to back these up, I'll have to plug something into it. <clears throat> and uh, I won't do that right now. Just hopefully I'll remember to do that if I decide to reformat it before I reformat it. Those, there's nothing seriously important. If I'm going to reformat it, that, none of those would actually matter. So, And I don't think I have a lot of other files in here. I probably have a few in root and a few in. Well, I'm not going to look at them now. It's not moving very fast there. Okay, so um, that screenshot I was looking for is not in there. So I still, that's the thing I'll need to find. Okay. Pictures should be in my screenshots. I looked through them though. Surely that screenshot didn't get saved. Like sometimes they don't save where they're supposed to and they end up in your home directory. Um, unless I put it over in like Fedora 29 info or something, I could have, but I don't think I did that. These are going to be all kinds of screenshots. These aren't going to be... This was when I was working with my videos today. Different things. Video I was watching. <clears throat> um, I, I always say, like, if I decide to quit watching a video, I'll do a screenshot of it. Show me the time where I was. Firefox quit. That's all about Firefox quitting. So sometimes I don't find what I'm looking for because that, that particular viewer, although it's fast and works nicely, doesn't always show them in the old, newest to oldest order. Especially if I use, uh, I don't know if there's any, yeah, let's see those that are named Workspace. Sometimes it, it's weird because sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Those were done with uh, Shutter Screenshot app because in certain windows, I can't. Uh, well, see, you can click on Shutter Screenshot and, and tell it to do it in a five second delay. Then you got time to click on a drop down list or something. And the default one, you just I just hit print screen and it's instant. Okay, so. Um, hasn't got to where it's responding yet that this is I, I'll, I'll this has always been my favorite uh, you know quick quick use uh, it'll do a little editing you can look you can view files and all that but it's something's gone wrong with it it uh, it's using too many resources and it takes forever to get going see it's barely responding. I don't know if maybe I didn't get that screenshot I tried to get. That's always possible. It was just a little pop-up window saying, this file's going to be moved. Oh, yeah, but it was in... Maybe it wasn't a pop-up window. Maybe it was a message in the terminal. Well, that's not. they're not in there. So... It's always possible that I went ahead and saved that to uh, Fedora 29 info. Let's see if I did. Maybe it wasn't ever a screenshot. Maybe it was a text file. Switch disk mate. Okay, let's see. Maybe it's... Uh, in the 
you know, how I, I always like to save the terminal output when I'm doing things so I'll know what I did or what went wrong or how to do it again if it worked, you know. So maybe this is what I need to be looking at. Make sure we're on the desktop and everything's okay. Yep, seems like it. Okay, switch desk mate. Oh, okay. Sys config desktop. Switch desk mate. Unknown desktop. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. And then switch desk XFCE. Oh, warning. <clears throat> Moving root exonetric to root exonetric. Okay. Switch desk. All right. So here's what we need to do then. I don't probably don't need to copy that. Well, I can use the. I've already. I'm already on it. So we'll just do it this way. I was going to do the remote terminal and use that, but we'll go ahead and get. I closed that app, didn't I? Which one is the one I want? I've already forgot. Oh, that one might be it. Cause the second one says Thunar. All right, is this KJ? Well, we'll find out right quick if we... Yeah. Oh, show hidden files? No, that wasn't it. That is Thunar. Just look for Kaja. There. All right. Now, well, first I'll just find what I'm looking for. Okay. Yeah, you can't, you know, some of them you can, like, you have a spot where you could paste the, uh, your, you know, the address that I just copied, but there's not a place to do that in this one. A go, or sometimes there's a go to. Let's see if that will do. No. I wonder if the view has a way to let's just go ahead and get the extra pane and the show hidden files up and going because I know we're going to need to see hidden the hidden files now I've already forgot where I was going Yeah, okay. Good thing I saved that. I would have never found it again. Root <coughs> dot X I N X I N I T R C switch disk. Moving root X and okay, X yeah, I can't say it. Two. So I need to go into switch disk. I know it will not work for what I'm trying to do, so I'm just gonna move it back to uh root. Oh it's just root dot x i n i t r c okay so we need to go to root it says moving it so actually i just need to rename it so we need to go to the root directory and look for x dot x switch disk okay Okay, and there's only one of them, right? That's the other thing is I can't tell. I need them to be. I guess you can't do it in this app. I need them to be. Um, oh, I'm in the wrong section here. That view, wrong part of the program. I don't want uh, a list. Then I can tell what the heck I'm looking at. There we go. No, it is a little smaller, but now I know for sure there's not another one next to it. Okay, so um, I 
guess I'll rename it. To something that will make sure it doesn't work. Now I don't know for sure that that'll make sure it doesn't work, so I'm gonna take the dots out of there. And then it's gonna be dot exonetric, right? Okay. Now how am I gonna do this? That is not really working for me, is it? What's that file there? Oh, I think that's the file I'm on. It, weird. It went to white. I'll copy it over. Then I'll rename it. I was going to leave it in the same folder. I think I'll take the dashes out and put the dots back in there. Which is, I don't think it's slow to do that. I think it's slow to show up. Um, I think my remote desktop is slowing down. Oh, I didn't say copy to the other directory. That's why. I just did copy. Now, let's go ahead and rename it before I forget. I'm going to put the dots back in there, but leave the word. Because, you know, later on I may forget how it was supposed to be. <clears throat> okay, now, let me go back and triple check what it is I'm going to... It's going to be named root dot xin xinictric. This time we'll use rename. Okay. That is a simple action that to, to change how all of that works. That if I hadn't saved that, I'd have never found that file again. Okay. Well, well evidently that made it work to with switch desk, you know. Probably when I, if I reboot that other little menu, it'll be gone. And it will make uh, Plymouth take back over is what I'm thinking. Now, what I want to do is, uh, you know, I want to view it. So I'm going to open it with Pluma, the uh, <coughs> text file <coughs> viewer. Okay. This is what it, that's all it is, though. I was wondering if it had anything to do with my desktop background not working. User bin, XFCE4 session, it says that over and over and over. Uh, mate session. Ah. So there is a mate session in there. So now, I wonder why that's in there so many times. I wonder if I take out those top two XFs. In a minute, I'm, I'm first. I'm just to see what it's like. But what I'm wondering is maybe if all I should need is XFCE4 and Mate, you know. But I'm gonna leave it as it is for now. And uh, but I'm probably end up going back and taking out those two there and leaving those two. And then that might make the default Mate because it's you know if it's being on top, it'd probably be the default. And um, yeah, my, if that makes a mate boot, then that'll be something. That'll be my, that'll be what I've been trying to do. Um, okay, so that folder. To oh yeah, and if that kernel's still broken, I've got a command I never. Uh, there's two commands I ran. One basically when I updated grub, but there's an update grub command. It's the same basic command with all with all the extra stuff, and then that I ran yesterday, 
and then there's another command that I hadn't run, and then there's a check desktop. I can't read my own writing. Something. Okay, so um, so what I want to do then is reboot the machine. So we'll go ahead and get on the camera so we can see that. But yeah, that's in. in Invaluable information right there. I am very glad I finally remembered that. And then fixing Plymouth bootloader. Yeah, that's and that that folder that's missing. That's still another thing. Uh, let's look in there. I think this is the one that talks about the folder that's missing. That's not there. Yeah, those are those commands I. Well, no, that's, yeah, that's the commands I ran from further up here. That's when I actually ran them. Uh, oh, yeah, all that 16-bit stuff and all that. See, I ran grub to make config and then all of that. Well, the, the uh, other little, you know, forum post was saying run grub make config. Um. Uh, I don't know, it might be best to have all that to tell it exactly where it goes. Uh, I remember just having to run that part, really not having to give it the whole address, but uh, of where grubconfig is. But it didn't give me any errors, so it might be the best way to do that. Yeah, and seeing it, and here's the output, it found all the different images and everything. So that's probably the best way to run that. And, but there's another command that I. It's not mentioned here that I could run. I have that in my email. I don't imagine I have that saved in a file. I think it's just in my email. Something I found actually previous to that and uh, forgot that I had that it was there. I was looking. Through, I was reading my emails today and I saw it. I sent it to myself. You know, it's what I always do. Switch disk mate command. Yeah, that didn't work. Okay, so. Uh, <clears throat> Let's see what kind of screenshots are in here for this thing before I go. I don't think there's anything. Oh, yeah, there's a screenshot of what we were just talking about. No, that's a screenshot from when uh, I was installing in the missing Hebrew fonts, yeah. And that is when I was running uh, in VirtualBox, running Fedora 29 in VirtualBox. Yeah, and that's when I was, yeah, that's just like basic, oh, a bunch of, just basic Fedora 29 stuff, not anything pertaining. I just wondered if there was something pertaining to this machine in there. <clears throat> okay, to the camera. <clears throat> now we'll get on the, uh, actually get on the machine. I'm using my long stick because it's easier than bending up over the. Well, it's easier to do this, but it's not easier to. There, <laughs> what's weird is uh, my monitor has a uh, <clears throat> clear plexiglass guard or something. I don't know what it's really there for, but it's a clear piece of plexiglass, and it just so happens that the green there's green light, there's yellow light showing you what machines are on. There's a green light. It lights up and shows you which machine you're switched to. The edge of that little PVC is exactly in the middle of that green light. And if I don't tilt my head way down or up a little, quite a bit, raise my head up, then I can't see that green light. It all looks, just looks like none of them are lit up. So, uh, it, and I forget about that. Because normally I reach down there and use the pencil and so I can see it. When I'm sitting here and not moving, you know, not bending over or anything, then uh, it does that. Okay. Did I disconnect the... Well, it won't really matter. I don't know if I disconnected the remote desktop or not. But, uh, okay, we're going to restart. <clears throat> and probably that little boot screen will be gone now. If Plymouth comes right up with a normal Plymouth boot, uh, login screen, I'll be happy with that. And maybe I'll uh, be more inclined to keep fiddling around with it. Why? Figuring out, well, I mean, I've had this top background quit working, and 
quit working and then come back automatically, you know, quit, or sometimes I just switch to a different desktop background and it's fine, you know, and, but I've seen them just all, you know, many of the different Linux dis, uh, Fedora dis, uh, versions of Fedora. I've seen it quit working. I'm just going to let it count down and boot like normal <coughs> and, um, and then start working again, you know. But when things start, if, if a different things are, that normally work just fine are not working, that's starting to tell me that, you know, that's going to make me worry that maybe I've broken things that could be a real pain to fix, you know. It would be easier, way easier to spend, a, you know, an hour or two hours reformatting than to spend days um, trying to fix things like that. I still got my little, my, my pretty boot screen. <coughs> and uh, so none of that's been changed but now I do think I have a clue as to how to get uh, I, I, I see that uh, Fedora, uh, XFCE twice and then mate and then XFCE again so in that uh, configuration file that, so desktop configuration file so uh, that could be why uh Nothing's showing up right. So I'm going to type star. Oh, first I got to log in. Start X. There's some quick. Uh, code there coming up that I w would might be a clue as to things that are going on. I wish I could see that. No, it's exactly the way it was. This time it uh, has Dawn on the top. Let's see. January 21, 1901. And default was January 22. So that's the last one I logged in as. Okay. So I think default is these yeah this are you this is just to, to choose a user and that's all you got there and I think that's probably an, an XFCE part of it I'm gonna go ahead and do well let's do Dawn because let's see what was it I wanted to do oh editing the it is it's a lot easier if you're already root well let's try Dawn and see if we're Dawn or root you can always reboot log out and log back in or whatever well, what's puzzled me no nope, it's root so that extra you know that dawn I, I put dawn in there thinking it was looking for a username but evidently it wasn't so uh So, um, yeah, <clears throat> I went ahead and put, you know, set it up so that I can log in on remote desktop so we can have a good video of it. Okay, so, yeah, it's showing as root again, so. So, <clears throat> um We'll get back in on the desktop. I haven't used the web browser this whole time. Okay. Um, trying to think. Just guessing at things can send you into days of... <laughs> Days of going in circles, so I'm trying to not do that. I'm trying to remember what it is I've actually found in my research that might help. What pertains to this and what pertains to the other things, too. Okay. Um, go ahead and get in. It uh, really doesn't matter which file manager I use for what I'm doing. Just as long as I can see the hidden files. Oh, 
Okay, so we want, we're in route. Okay, so yeah, see, we can't see uh, any of the files with the dot in front of them. Anaconda, Kickstart, PTC, Grub, Original. That should actually be, I'm going to leave it. I might not have made, I was going to, I thought maybe I made that, but, and I probably did. Uh, dot original, no, I, I think that's a backup by the system. Don't don't move that. Okay, so uh, show hidden files. This is what I don't like about these kind of file managers. You just get a count. I mean, I could set those as defaults, but maybe if I can find where to do it. Okay, X in it trick, right? Yeah. X screen saver, X clients default, authority. Now, I didn't, when I ran those commands last time, I did it, making sure, I did it uh, <clears throat> with that file moved, I think. So I'm kind of wondering if, uh, open it with Puma. Kind of wondering if running those commands again might make make that work. But oddly enough, let's see. Before I, uh, oops, I just clicked on the file manager. I don't want to open a new file manager. Well, I guess that did what I wanted. Okay, yeah, this desktop doesn't work the way I'm used to things. So uh, what I want to do is copy it before I edit it. Where did it go? Exonitric. Yeah. Right, clicked on it, but it didn't do anything yet. There we go. Copy documents and put a copy of it in there. I think it's just really slow. I don't think it's... <clears throat> sometimes it doesn't take. It's the problem, you know, when your remote desktop's not working right, and sometimes it's just slow to show you what it's doing. Paste. There. Now, I'm going to close that. And I want to edit that file and reboot again and see what happens. Because I don't see any reason for XFCE to be in there that many times. Yeah, I can't. Um, see this? Oh, there it is. It's up at the top. I was like, I can't switch. Oh, it did open up. Uh, opened up the file manager I've got it open like three times I'm used to these being at the bottom the, uh, the thing you know the little choosers end up closing that um, if you keep clicking the next thing you'll do is close the the freaking file you had open that you was trying to edit now I'm getting pissed at all this I think it's actually easier to do it when the remote desktop works good it's fine but when it doesn't work good then it's easier to do it with midnight commander on the remote terminal <laughs> it's, it's more responsive okay so now we get back to this file again exonitric open with pluma <coughs> all right Delete. <coughs> Save. Now mate's on top. Now let's see if it logs in as to mate. Or if it shows me a, a normal chooser or something. I, I doubt that's going to change that, but maybe that may make mate the default. That's what I'm thinking. Close this app altogether this time. Let's see. I think I'll close 
everything I'm not using. The slowness could actually be the, my machine. I don't think it is. Let's see. Seems everything seems good on the resource usage. Back to the <coughs> screen view, the tablet camera. <coughs> All right. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> now, I'm going to reboot. <clears throat> I, I kind of wonder if uh, having that Switch Desk app, edit, you know, take over that file, if every time I typed uh, Switch Desk uh, XFCE, <clears throat> it was putting it in another entry in there like that. That's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> and as far as that chooser looking thing, which doesn't actually choose, <laughs> of course, I probably didn't do it right. Uh, I mean, it just, when it said add an entry, I added Dawn, and it just took it. And actually, the, that time, it went in to dawn <clears throat> so um and i thought i saw it going into dawn several times but then all of a sudden at some point there i looked up i thought i was in dawn i looked up and i was in root you know <clears throat> let's see what the terminal output has to say this time starting switch root i should have started right away to see anything might be errors. I, I haven't been looking at it. And I usually do do that, but since I was trying to make the graphic stuff work, I've been, you know, there's some, oh, that's that's hardware sensor. That's always been there. Anyway, the first few uh, messages I didn't see. <clears throat> but, uh, okay, got to log in again. I just realized something. It's logging me into whatever I'm logging in as as root, and so when I go to the graphic user interface, I'm already logged in as root. So that's why I get root. <laughs> so you don't need another one. You just need default. In this the way this works here in this server setup, it's never been, and I've never had anything work like this before. <clears throat> um, so if I were logged in as Dawn, and then I I type start X, then I would be logged in as Dawn in the GUI. That's what it is. Okay, that answers that question, just paying attention to what's going on. Okay, so, but as far as the, uh, <clears throat> now I'd like to get rid of that Dawn because that's just confusing. But I don't see a way to delete it from there. I'd have to go somewhere else to do that. Probably find that config file or something. But, uh, Oh, look, it's me. That was it. Woohoo! I love Mate desktop. It is, I, I, I grew up on Genome too. That's what I learned on. And switching from uh, Windows XP, the desktop background's not working in here either. Switching from Windows XP, oh, I hadn't finished yet, <clears throat> to um, Genome 2. Uh, I loved all the I loved this the way it's laid out and having the four uh, separate desk workspaces or desktops you know uh, <clears throat> I just loved everything about it and I've always loved it and uh, there we go but uh, my desktop uses a little bit too much resources we'll see we'll see how this machine runs on it so that's it so whichever one's at the top of that file that's the default and you don't need extra entries <clears throat> 
So if you want to switch it, edit that. Well, I'll open it up again here in a second because I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, see, Mate has, uh, this is how Mate's set up. You know, it's got Thunderbird up there. Thunderbird, when you install Mate desktop, you get Thunderbird. And I like, I use Thunderbird, but I don't want it on, I'm not going to use it on my server. I'm not going to set it up. But, uh, <clears throat> well, you probably most likely not anyway. Firefox, Terminal, File Manager. Let's go ahead and move those though before. Oh, it's, lo it's locked, so. I want my, oh, you got to unlock the whole thing, I guess. Got to unlock every one of them. They're all locked. They don't really, those really don't need to be locked. Uh, they don't ever move around on you. And this is where I put my thun. I think I'll take it out because I, what I'll do is forget and click on it. <clears throat> well, let's leave it alone for right now. If it works good, I'll just let it be the desktop for this machine. Because I'm so much more, uh, it has more features. And, uh, <clears throat> oh, okay, let's get the, uh, we're on the camera. Let's see. App Finder, I'm going to put that up there. App to panel, add to panel. Now, <clears throat> KRFB. I don't think KRFB will start automatically in Mate uh, like it does in XFCE. It might. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> now I can go get on the remote desktop. <coughs> I can see that the camera's way behind again. <coughs> <coughs> and what's <coughs> bad about it is rebooting the camera doesn't seem to help. Um, <coughs> I don't know. Maybe if I rebooted my router, it would help. But then that means... I'll lose connection to all my cameras, and um, I'd have to stop the video and start a new video. But the, I did it the other day. I did that. I can't remember what all I restarted right now, <clears throat> but I remember. I, I do remember it was. It did not help on the 10 inch tablet. It starts out pretty good, and then it don't take long for it to get way behind. Maybe it would quit doing that if I would. Uh, <clears throat> I do have it on 100% quality, and it's an 8 megapixel camera, and that's more data, you know. And so maybe I can't do 100% quality, <clears throat> but uh, of course it's going to look a lot more grainy. It's already grainy enough. <clears throat> okay, yeah, we're on the desktop. Okay, made desktop. And. Uh, yeah, now here's everything I was talking about. And I, I'd sit there, I could have, if I'd have remembered that I wasn't on. <clears throat> uh, that I was not on a desktop, I would have went ahead and done that first. Let's see. So here's my, and uh, of course I have App Finder because that's uh, been installed along with XFCE. And. Uh, <clears throat> I think I installed LibreOffice with from the uh, net install CD or USB ISO net install ISO. I don't think there's yeah there's yeah it doesn't have doesn't even have VLC on it or anything which that's fine right I, you know I may not <laughs> if I get to where I need it I can always just put it on there but. Uh, just what came along with the desktops, really, the, by, by automatic. There we go. Put that on the launcher panel because I'm using that all the time. <clears throat> it actually seems to be working fine. <clears throat> I mean, I'm on remote desktop, and it seems fine. <clears throat> let 
So um, it actually seems a little more responsive than it was a minute ago on <coughs> on uh, XFCE, which I wouldn't see why it would be, but so it seemed like it. So let's open up the web browser. That's the quickest test. That's the heaviest user of, of apps I use all the time. <coughs> I got my window cracked a little bit <clears throat> to keep from being too hot in here, which I may be getting. It's really humid today, and uh, I, <clears throat> I haven't felt hot really since I cracked the window. But it was 63 today, and I, I didn't even get hot then. But it's 77 right now in here. But there, I think it's cooling off outside. I feel a little coolness, coolness in the air right now. Anyway, maybe that's why my allergies are worse because I have the window crack. <clears throat> and I just heard of what made me think of that is I just heard a siren, an ambulance or something, either an ambulance or a fire truck. This is Fedora's. Um, this is a homepage that <clears throat> that's automatically in Fedora 29 with Mate Desktop anyway. And uh, well, it was in the other one too, I think, because when I clicked Home, it's where it went in XFCE. Anyway, this is actually some good entry. I don't go here all the time, but there is, every time I do go here, I usually see one or two articles I'm interested in. <coughs> Netboot server, that would be interesting. And I say, I'll go back and look at that, and then I never remember to. So, um, let's see. There's probably no, let's go to my website. Probably no, um, players or anything Let's see if we can play an mp3 probably had would have to install something i just i'm just seeing how well it's working this might let's see if it works it may be loud we'll see didn't do anything Oh, yeah, it's it's not going to play it. You can either open it with Exhale or save the file. Let's see what Exhale does, see if it can play it. <clears throat> It'll download it and play it. I don't use that player. I don't think it plays very much stuff. <laughs> very well. I guess it's going to take a while to either it's taking it's going to open download it first and then open it up or just taking it that long to open that app i don't know i don't i don't like i said i don't use it that much <coughs> but uh vlc is my favorite all, all all in all favorite player i use it for everything that it can possibly play it may not ever open it may not be going to work oh that's the other thing i need is some sort of Probably, yeah, mate system monitor. I think that's the one I like anyway. So let's add it up here. We'll see if Exhale is. Maybe this isn't the one. Maybe, no, that's the wrong section anyway. <coughs> Some of these system monitors, yeah, it doesn't have a searcher in it. Some of these system monitors don't. Uh, they use so many resources that you can't. This is what we're running. Fedora 29, server edition, 64-bit. And the kernel is 419, so-and-so, so-and-so. And this is mate 1.20.4. 1 1.9 gigabyte of memory. Celeron, 2.8 gigahertz. <coughs> So I'm going to close that one because it's not the one I want because I can't search for. I did all that. <laughs> all that getting it in there before I found out sure if it's the right one. Oh, I don't think I have another one. I don't have the one I like. Some, oh, there's, well, task manager will work. Uh, it's the XFCE one. <coughs> At least has a search in it if I remember right. You're using the root account. Oh, I forgot about it. What? Oh, okay. I didn't remember that I was in root. See, it doesn't show the username up there. I like it to do that. I wonder why it's not doing that. 
But yeah, here's the search. Was it AX? I don't even know what. Uh, it's running a lot of XFCE stuff in the background, isn't it? <clears throat> and that, see, I, originally I was not going to install anything but XFCE because I didn't want uh, all these extra things running in the background for two desktops. There's actually less stuff for Mate than there is for XFCE. How funny. But, uh, <clears throat> what is the, can you organize it by, yeah, yeah I think if I click on that, there we go. See, what's using the most CPUs on top now? <clears throat> ABRT, really. No way. I think I've got it wrong way. Now, there we go, yeah. 63%, 58% by XOR, which is the uh, GUI. <coughs> and XFCE4 task manager is running. Yeah, so, uh, <coughs> of course, I'm not, What I don't think I'll work. That's not going to be too big of a deal because, uh, I'm just going to let it run without a desktop unless I need a desktop. It's going to be in the garage, so I'll just st I'll just type start X and I'll just set whichever one of the either XFCE or Mate as the default. <coughs> and uh, I'm going to put that task manager up there in the panel and put it in. See the space that I left where where the other one was. Now that now it went right into that spot, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> and. I guess it's using uh, Thunar as the file manager. I'm not going to even install Crusader or anything right away. I probably will have to if I do any work on this thing at all. But, uh, yeah. Let's see what documents I have. <clears throat> Don't have any documents. I'm sure I don't. Oh, yes, I did. I have those. Uh, uh, all those. Yeah, those files. I'll make a folder for that. No downloads. Only th I, I know I don't have videos. I have the. I have some screenshots. So bit. See, I click on it, and it takes a bit for anything to happen. I'm going to put uh, <clears throat> a folder in here and move that stuff to it before it gets out of hand. Door 29 server info. That's how I'll do that. Now, I guess I'll do this like wind blow style. Select them all and then drag them over. Is that how you do it? Looks like it. Yep. I always hated a Windows Explorer because that never worked well for me. They'd end up in a different folder than I thought. Like I would say, try to drag them to a folder over here on the tree. Or sometimes they would just mysteriously get deleted, and I wouldn't realize it until later. Maybe one day I'd find them in the trash, or maybe i never find them again, you know. <clears throat> as soon as I discovered, to uh, well, it was Windows Commander originally, and then they Windows sued the makers, and they had to change the name to Total Commander. Never ever wanted using but a twin panel file manager. Okay, so that's cool <laughs> and the desktop works. I keep just thinking I don't need uh it would be good to have one it's good to have a one machine that you can download your email onto as a backup. You know, just just open it up every once in a while and it'll autom and that'll be an automatic backup for your email. But uh, I don't know if I want this machine to be that or not, really. I guess if I leave it not logged in, and only I will actually know how to log into it, so nobody can accidentally get in there and delete any files or anything, you know, then uh, 
get in there and accidentally delete files or something, you know. So, you know what? I'm not going to try to set it to XFCE because I'm surprisingly, this seems to work just as well. In the remote desktop, it's actually responding better than XFCE did. So, if it'll work good enough, <clears throat> um, and if it works, you know, okay, a little sluggish in the remote desktop, then it's going to be usable in the, uh, what was the player, XAIL, A X A I L E. Let's open that up now and see if it even runs. I guess it'll run. Yeah, I still got the browser open. I forgot I had it open. Maybe the player don't work. There it is. It's opening it up now. It probably can't play MP3s because <clears throat> MP3 is a Microsoft owned format, codec, and uh, we'll just find out while we're sitting here. We'll when this time I'll click on it on that song of mine there, and uh, we'll say save it. And then I'll open it with Excel. Not even anything up there to tell you when your downloads are finished. Oh, there it is. I have. I do not. I leave my stuff organized in a completely different way. Oh, look. Did it not ever download right? Let's see. No, I think I just got it twice. I'm on time lapse. Oh, it didn't work. Wonder why. My website's working. But see, the, there's two downloads of that song. <clears throat> One, and that's why Excel never opened to play it because it never, uh, never finished downloading. Now that's weird. That could be something wrong on my server. I don't know. Let's try a different song. I'll do it differently. I'll right click and say save link as. Let's see if that's got anything to do with it. Oh, now this time it opened up. Now it completed. I think there's something wrong with the uh, automatic download thing. I went ahead and canceled that. Cancel both of them. Now let's retry that one again just to see. Well, now it's working. Now it's got a little uh, progress bar. Well, it's not finished. It should have already finished. I'll just leave it trying this time. I think uh, there's something wrong with perhaps, you know, way my, my website, I originally built it in started in 98 or 99 i guess and anyway it's been built since like oh one or two or something i mean i've re-edited it and stuff but i did up you can use um, html editors to automatically up automatically used it to automatically update the code to html5 but that don't mean there might be some things left behind that aren't compatible with the brand new firefox so add music. Let's go ahead and open the file manager and move. Wait, we were waiting for a download. We don't need a bunch of them. <laughs> I'm just trying to see if it works. Yeah, it looks like it's not going to work. So I'm going to cancel it. Something wrong with that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's something wrong with that file. We'll, let's try it. Let's try the same method on that that file. Shouldn't be. Save link as. Okay. See if it works like it should. I guess it's not going to show me. Yeah, it worked. I'll go to show all downloads again. I closed that. Now I want it back open. Okay, complete. Yes, yeah, it's only 10 megabytes. So, 
Something didn't work right. Okay. It's always something. Now. Uh, yeah, I'll leave the web browser open because I want to see. Let's just see if we can open a file. There we go. That's all I wanted to do anyway. Ah. Yeah, this player can't play that anyway. Oh yeah, I don't have any, uh, this is remote desktop, we wouldn't hear anything anyway. Um, yeah, no suitable plugins found. You'd have to install, I, I just use VLC because it works right out of the box. Okay, so not a big deal, not important anyway. It's always good to have some kind of audio files on your, down. I'll just leave them on there, that way you can test apps and stuff. Okay, so I hit the back button on my, I have a forward and back button on my <clears throat> mouse. I never remember to mention that. People, I wonder, I guess, if people were watching the video and they saw it just go back. Of course, it's not working, though. I, usually, I, do, I mention it when it doesn't work, <laughs> but it's not working. Okay, so I'll hit the go back button. Sometimes, some, some pages are, well, it usually does work when you're, like, still on the page and you haven't gone off of it and gone back to it or anything. And this is my first album, and that was my second album. That's all I have is two albums. But these are... So I wrote the lyrics, sang, and did the singing, and other people, other friends did the playing the music. And, well, really, they did the, mostly did the recording. I, I might just say, yeah, I like that, or I don't like that, or whatever. But then I did the mix, you know, mix down, and put them, and made MP3s, and put them on CDs, and all that stuff, so... Yeah, the back button on my mouse is not working in here. I don't know why. Maybe Oh, I think it doesn't ever work in remote desktop. Okay, so my website is working. Let's go ahead and download a song from there just to see. It's killing two birds with one song. I'm, I'm seeing if uh, things are working right on here. I mean, if you didn't know, that is the original way to download things is to right click and save as and it still works uh, unless you're on a Mac there's no right click on a Mac that works that's in Windows that's in Linux and Mac I actually don't remember I've only been on Mac just a tiny bit I don't remember how you do it <coughs> yeah that uh, that thing there well, oh, I get, it's just smaller or something. Yeah, I can kind of see, barely see that there's a progress bar in there. I put it up here and see, I don't, there's no, uh, should be able to do that. Let's see. Oh, how do you change things in here? Customize, I think, is what you got to do. No, that's not exactly how you do it, but yeah, see, I, I need to be able to see my words up there at the top, but I don't want those little stack of books. I don't want that thing. I don't need that extra space over there taking up space. I want the search bar up here. Don't remember, yeah, I don't need that little thing there taking up space. And... Some of this stuff, if I do want it, I want it up above the, it's not customized, it's, I uh, thought you just right clicked up there. There, I just went in the right spot, menu bar. I don't necessarily really like the toolbar, but I definitely have to have that. And then, customize. <clears throat> and put the download thing right up there. And then the other thing that I want, you know, in there. I don't think I actually want any of this stuff up there. Okay. 
Okay, so. I, this works well enough. I'm just, I'm just going to leave it like this. Uh, I'm on remote desktop and it's working that good. It's not getting unresponsive or anything. I definitely like Mate way better than XFCE. Let's see about the, uh, just look in the system. Hardware, display, power management. Let's make sure there is no screensaver, any of that turned on. Never put the display to sleep. And uh, wait a minute. <clears throat> You don't want the computer to go to sleep. It's a server display. That actually might be. Oh, not not when I'm in the graphic user interface. It's going to go to sleep no matter what when it's in the command line. Okay. Power button is ask me. When the spin button is pressed, I don't know that there is. This fancy keyboard here I got does have a bunch of fancy buttons like that on it. Oh. Do nothing. Suspend. Hibernate. I'll leave it like that. I only have display icon. Okay, AC power. Yeah, that should be all right. Now then. There's a screensaver. I took all this junk out of the... Yeah, I don't want it to be running. But I want to just tell it... I don't want it locking screen or doing any other aggravating thing. Choose a random image. <laughs> Fedora, fade black. Okay. Yeah, none of that's enabled. Okay. Surprise. I don't know how that got disabled since I haven't been into this desktop before to disable it. It must have taken, when I did it in XFCE, it must have worked in there too in here too there's no I think it looks like there's two screen savers on it let's make sure we don't have any of them on blank screen yep this is another ah yeah that one's on two hours but I'm actually going to you turn it off. I like screen savers, but they use a lot of resources. So never, never. Okay, that's the same power management, though. So, but I, what I'm actually going to do, I want it like that in case it. Sometimes in an, during an after an update, that's those darn screen savers will be back on. Uh, they'll turn. They'll be turned back on, even though you had them turned off. You know, I didn't even notice the whether the the uh, appearance was anything I didn't like. It may be oh, just fine. Power manager. Let's see. Personal startup applications and preferred applications. Those are the two real important things, and that's where I'm going to turn off. Yeah, there's one thing I like about. XFCE, you can actually make that full screen. It doesn't have to be full screen, but it needs to be. I don't want it so tiny. Well, on the remote desktop, it's hard to get. No, there, I got it for a minute, for a second there. Doesn't have to be super big, but the more I can see, the better, though. So let's see if we can. It doesn't show you that it's grabbing it, but it's grabbing it. But anyway, um, key storage. Updater, firewall, GeoClue demo agent. GeoClue? I don't want that. I don't even know what it is. Input, live install, setup. Well, I'll leave that for now. That might still be there because it's the first time I went and logged into Mate. And uh, I don't know, though. Well, if there's no install now icon over there. We'll leave it for now. Screen reader. 
really need that starting up. Let's see. I will probably use... <clears throat> yeah, I, I like screen readers once in a while. I used to use them a lot. Not so much anymore. Power manager. I'll leave it like that. I, th I think that'll be okay. Print queue applet. Problem reporting. Pulse audio. Screen saver. Take that out. S secret store. Nissy Linux. Spice V agent. I don't. That. I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm not sure. That's it. I can't remember what it does. And it gets installed into every Fedora system. So. I thought it was something to do. Not remote desktop, but. I thought it was something to do with like virtual machines is what I really thought. Vbox client. Hmm. I don't remember installing any VMware user agent. I'm going to leave all that on there for now. But that's the client, not the server. So, huh. so that's how I'll leave it for now. It's running good, so, and I don't want to take things out that might actually cause trouble, you know. I was really worried about what might be wrong with that, you know, because the XFCE's desktop was gone, background was gone. This is blurry. As, oh, I think that's supposed to be that way. That's the way they made that. I was going to say, is this like a tiny image being stretched or what? We can look and see. First, let's finish where we were at. Um... Preferred applications. Firefox Thunderbird, that's what I want. I have mate. Let's see what else we got. I don't think we got anything else. I'm probably going to have to install. Come on. I guess there may not be anything else, or it's just slow all of a sudden. That Parole Media Player, I really don't like it all. I, I usually just go ahead and uninstall it because it wants to take over everything. See Excel. There must not be any others. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, if there is something else, then I guess it'll show it. And if there's not, it won't. But uh, Excel is a, just a music player, so it can't. So I guess there's no other image viewers in there. Now it's kind of, yeah, okay. Text editor, make terminals good. File manager's fine for now. <coughs> That's good. <coughs> yeah, I don't want any of that stuff starting up. Okay, that's good. Now, where were we? Anything in the administration that I need to do? Desktop switcher. I'm going to look in there and see if there's... Oh. Let's click that on the system default. Because uh, I don't think this will do anything anymore. And I'm going really just soon uninstall it. Because, you know, I moved that file back to where it belonged. And now i got made desktop. But, um, okay, but you got to restart. I should have left that. Got a screenshot of that, what I actually did. There it is. I might. I usually just don't go. Oh. Huh. Hmm. I wonder why it did that. Oh. I'll bet you. It can't do that because. Or it's not. It's not changing anything because this switcher can't can't work with me. I sure hope it doesn't take over and, and put me back into XFCE by doing this. I don't think it will. I guess I could go look in that file and see. Let's go look right now. I forgot where. Oh, yeah. I think it's in the root folder, wasn't it? Oh, it renamed it. Yeah. Okay. And I see the view. 
see if we can uh, fix that. I'm tired of having to do that every time. Sort folders before files. That's fine. Default view. I don't want icons. I want. Uh, come on. I think my remote desktop's getting tired again. List view. I got oh you've got a doesn't work like normal. You know, like when you're in mate for, for sure, you click on it and it drops down. You can let you need to let go. If you don't, then it doesn't work right. Well on the remote desktop it's the opposite. You have to hold the button down. I think that's what I want. Text beside icons. I'm not even sure. I did it again. Okay, I think if you hold it down, yeah, hold it down and it works. Okay, I want owner. I never did see anything that would let me. Uh, Let me see view hidden files by default. There. No. Yeah, show hidden. It was in the very first window and I didn't see it. Show hidden in backup file. Now, now we're finally have a normal file manager. Okay, so it's X and it correct. You probably double click on it and it'll open up. Might not have been a good idea. Might try to execute it. I think it's, oh, there it is. No, it opened it up. So yeah, mates on the top, XFC is on the bottom. Didn't rename it or anything. So that app, that desktop switcher is just an ineffective app now. But that's fine. It didn't it didn't do what I needed it to do anyway. It doesn't support mate desktop of all things. So uh, <clears throat> it's called what? Desktop switcher. Desktop switcher. Yeah, see, if you hit print screen, you won't get a screenshot with a default viewer when you've got a menu out open like that. That's why I always use the, and I can't find out how to set a delay. Actually, it's kind of nice not having a delay. It's, um, a lot of times you want to, especially if I'm trying to get a screenshot in a video, sometimes I take a running screenshot, you know, while, uh, while the video's going because I see something I just think looks cool. And uh, like that's what I was doing, I was saying, you know, same screenshot i was trying to see that one uh, earlier uh, was it this same video yeah uh the the girl in the video i was watching she had that staff and i was like what is that on the top of that and i finally figured out it was a pipe wrench that was sharpened on the end <laughs> and i thought dang that would pack a wallop wouldn't it <clears throat> so um that was uh, anyway. You can do that. I don't, you can do it. You know, as the video's playing with the real with the print screen when it's instant like that. But it's good to have a delay too when you want to get a drop down list or something. Then you hit and you got however many seconds you set four to seven is what I usually use to you know get over here and do this before the screenshot takes. But I don't have another screenshot app on here. And plus, I can't figure out how to make a delay uh, happen in this default one anyway in Mate. So I used to could. But uh, now most of these settings you can do in the control center, but I have trouble finding what I want in there. So I just do it from here. 
The other thing I didn't do yet. Yeah, look and feel. Appearance. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> I'm just going to leave it in the make desktop unless it starts. Oh, yeah, it's not the... Uh, not the thing that I like. I don't like those up and down arrows. I like a normal old fashioned one. Some of those look, you know, mist won't work. Oh, oh yeah, it will. It just hadn't loaded yet. Traditional okay is good. That's actually the one with the little circle and the triangle. That's a mate theme. Mist is one, well, I don't like that. Yeah, the one that I like is this one right here. Traditional, okay. And then as far as the, uh, the background is fine like it is. The fonts, oh, I, I tried to click on background, but I got fonts. But that's fine. Everything seems fine right now. Background, I like that new background, so I'm going to leave it alone. It takes a while for them to come in usually. But there is plenty of others to choose from in here in this. More than I think XFCE has. And then interface. What do we got here? Yeah, I'm not going to bother with any of this now. But see, this is what I like. The beige, or however you color you call, call that, and a blue bar, and then minus sign, a box, and X. Now, I kept trying to do that in XFCE. I tried, I tried traditional OK, and it never took. There's something broken in the theme chooser, I think. I think that's why the desktop background wasn't working. I think the team choosers all of a sudden got broke somehow. Might have been completely unrelated to what I was doing, though. Now I do have to wonder if uh, <clears throat> the normal... It doesn't matter, though. Since this is a server, and it defaults to just booting up to a terminal window that's not logged in and the server serves like it's supposed to, that's fine. I had Fedora 23 set up. That's just what happened when I installed... Uh, XFCE and Mate, I got all the graphical normal stuff like with a desktop system. And so it would boot up to the logon screen. And then you could either log on or not, you know. And uh, it would just sit there in the logon screen all the time if you didn't log on. Of course, there, there's a little bit of resources being used for that logon screen. So I guess, you know, it's just great to not have any, any extra stuff running. And, uh, and like I said, since it's going to be out in the garage instead of right here in my room with me, it's probably good that you have to know the command to type in order to, I was looking to make sure what, what was going on with my video. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I'll, uh, as long as I can, the problem is, is me remembering, if I keep using it very often, I'll remember. I've known that Stardex command. It's one of the first things I actually, <coughs> it's one of the first things I learned in Linux commands. <coughs> but I haven't used it much at all in the last several years. The older distros, that's you had to do that to get into the GUI. They didn't have a fancy logon chooser, you know. And uh, actually, the very first one I ever used was one to, what was it called? System Rescue Disk. It would, uh, you could reset uh, your, if you lost your Windows password, you could reset the Windows password with it. And it was, I didn't know, know it was Linux, uh, until later, until I started learning about Linux. I just knew it was cool and I could use it. And, but it was all command line, but it had uh, instructions in, in, in that told you what to do. Now do this, now do that. It was kind of, I guess, a wizard or something. So, uh, you know, you could do it by just booting it up and following the instructions. Okay, so uh, I think I've got... I just started doing that without thinking one way or the other. Well, it's the first thing you need to do, really. This is the first thing you need to do is get things set up. You need to do it right as soon as you can. Mate user manager. That's a new looking thing to me. Let's see. Yeah, login window. Login window. What is that? That's a different thing. That's different from desk switcher. <clears throat> okay. That's the one you know, that I put Dawn into. Right, okay. I, did, I missed... I, oh, okay. Oh, this is just for the login window. So these themes are not for your desktop. They're for the login window. 
But what I started wondering was those commands I ran that were supposed to fix, the, you know, the chooser not showing up, maybe if I ran them again, they might work. But now I'm thinking maybe I don't care. Now that I've got it working, actually, this might be a better way for this server when it goes out into the garage. Well, that, um, only thing I don't, oh, I see. Huh. So, you know what, if I was, uh, if I, I think I'll reboot, but I think with this set like this, I think if I reboot and I type, and I log in as Dawn in the terminal, and then I type start X, it may just go straight to log in as Dawn without stopping and asking anything like it does uh, when I'm logged in as root. That's what I'm starting to think now. But that would be good. I mean, you know, that's fine. Because <clears throat> I will, uh, you know, I'll be the only one to be able to do it. Other monitors. Okay, so. Yeah, that's not actually what I meant to click on. Although, I was thinking, I can't seem to hit an N on the keyboard. Either that or it's not working right. Dragora. <clears throat> I would like to get rid of that Dawn and that login chooser because it... Uh, going to end up being confusing later to me. It's already had me confused. I kind of thought I shouldn't just add, put that in there not really knowing what exactly I was doing. <clears throat> but uh, really, I didn't know. I started to try it and I didn't. Maybe if I would have typed in there yeah, because the default, that might be for the desktops after all, because it's default, it was going into XFCE. Now, uh, now I don't even remember, but I suppose it came up and I clicked on it and it went into mate. So that would be the, so what I shouldn't, type in Dawn in there just, but it didn't give me, I, I don't think it matters what kind of, what name you give it to the other, to add one. A profile or whatever it was called. And this will have to finish loading before it will do anything. But I was thinking I'm going to uninstall that app. I don't know if I can be able to show it or not, but uh, desktop switcher. I want to uninstall desktop switcher if I can. So the reason I say if I can, because uh, usually when you go to uninstall something, it's called switch desk though I think so I'm gonna look for switch desk when you uh, uninstall something it will it will generally come up with or uh, some uh, very often come up saying okay these other things we think might may be used by other apps but we're not sure so but we think it's okay go, do you want to go ahead and uninstall well I don't know and I don't want to break anything so I end up not uninstalling stuff sometimes because of that. Often because of that. <clears throat> I wait for it to finish loading. <clears throat> Switch SK. Okay, now that is the name. Actually, yeah, let's try name first. Oh, yeah, hitting enter doesn't work. Or does it? Maybe it was working. There we go. Switch disk. Oh yeah, switch desk and switch desk GUI. That's right. I installed those uh, with a command, but that rings a bell right there. I'm doing the screenshot because I want to have a record of what I've done. Now, on the applies on the left now instead of on the right, <clears throat> where it used to be with the. Uh, MX or DN and whether well, it was DNF extender too, and then now there's no DNF extender, there's just Dragora. Okay, and it's only going to remove those two apps, so that's good. I'm 
no problem. You're so small. Yeah, I don't want that on there because it won't work for me. And if you were using the, the desktop that it supports, then it uh, might be fine and dandy. <clears throat> Is it done? No, it's applying changes. Okay, now it's doing it. Yeah. Okay. Let's look and see what's under Plymouth. Yesterday, I didn't actually search for Plymouth. This time I'm going to change it to descriptions or summaries. I never know. I think description is better. I think that's more wide, wide, wider range of results. <clears throat> see you should be able to uh, always before you could say all you know you could, <laughs> I just now realized no you cannot you still can't say all <clears throat> and so you have to do it over and over and over and wait for that search to be done oh every time like four different times for one search term it's just insane if you don't you won't find what you're looking for first I thought uh you know the newer Fedora distros when they when they started with this uh, DNF Dragor, I thought they had dropped like thousands upon thousands of apps, and I couldn't believe it. But then I discovered, you know, how it worked, or how it didn't work. Okay, Plymouth graphical boot animation and loader. Okay, uh, libraries. Editors for writing splash plugins. Graphics libraries. Well, I've got one of those. A lot of different versions. You can change it to <clears throat> show only, like I could say, change it to show only 64 bit. But then, you know, this machine will, you know, 64 bit machines will run 32 bit apps, and then you'll. You'll think, uh, so if it's available in uh, 64, uh, 32, only available in 32-bit, I'll use it, you know. Let's see, user preferences. Let's see what's in there. Let's see, proceed without asking, uh, show updates, show groups view next startup, show newest packages only, match all words, search options match all words huh I wonder if that would help when you put more than one word in there I'm going to leave it alone because the last time I searched for two words it wasn't too bad history I don't remember what that one's for all let's don't change all that just go back to looking at what we were looking at Plymouth, <clears throat> it's just so much crap to look through. And you see, you can't see. I don't think you can drag that over. If you could drag that over, because that's a waste of space there. You know, there's nothing there to see. Uh, if you could see everything to the right here and see the release numbers, but still you can't tell. See, you don't even know what's installed and what's not. That would tell you right quick which one you got. Well, you can tell by the check mark over here on this side. Unless you start checking things to install them, then it doesn't differentiate. Used to, you could tell over here on the left side. Uh, it would turn the word would turn red or something. Well, it was green if it was available, and red if you were going to uninstall it. Or I don't remember now, but anyway. Themes, yeah. Are calling plugin script, that's what they're calling them. But I can see those are boot themes. And I'm using Spinifity. It was already installed. Okay. Boot imagery for sugar on a stick. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, there's nothing else that can be installed there, so I'm gonna quit that. 
Now that's a, that is a the heaviest cheeser, <coughs> and it worked just fine. A little slow because it's on remote desktop. So uh, now I'm glad I installed Mate Desktop because I believe that's just gonna. I'm just gonna leave it as a default desktop. I don't think. Uh, I always kind of limp along when I have to use XFCE because it just doesn't have all the same functionality. Things are, are set up and laid out different. And finding where things are, you know, like all this stuff I'm going through right now. This is still the, basically the same layout it was from the Fedora 5 all the way till now. Um, you know, there's be things added and, well, depending on what you have on your system, but I mean, and sometimes they change where things are put you know or, but it's been like just like pretty much the way everything i've just been going through has been like that since i know before door 23 i think be, before that okay i was wondering about that mate user manager <clears throat> i guess that's users and groups that may be something that's changed get user languages Dawn, get that's weird. Dawn, get languages failed. What the world is that? I just realized those screenshots may be well, they're not showing on my desktop, but it just said, I think it just showed it's oh, that's. Huh. It's more than one thing. Save in folder desktop. Yeah. Well, let's stop doing that. I'm going to end up having to move all those. That's the default. Why would you want your screenshots, pictures saved on your desktop? Now I need to make a new folder. I can't make a folder. There it is. No, I'll just take my screenshot. That, that's not working. Okay. Let's, we'll just deal with that later then. Hmm. Yeah, Dawn. I'll type standard password automatic logon is off. Okay, well, that's fine. Okay. But it's, I guess it's turned on in XFCE. I'm not sure. Add moot user, remove user, but there's only the one user, so. Okay. I don't know what all those errors were about. I've never really seen that kind of error before. <coughs> okay. So let's go to the file manager and see. <coughs> For a while there, uh, Fedora had... Uh, Yeah, it has a desktop folder now. It, for a while there, one distro, I think it was for door 23, there was no desktop folder, and it was so aggravating. But it wasn't showing up on my desktop, though. So I've never seen that happen. You don't see anything. So, but what I want is... You can't, that extra pain won't ever stay. You always have to turn it on when you want it. What I want is to go to, so I'm in as root though, see? When you open up the file manager, it'll go to whatever user you're in. I'm in as root, root user. I don't need the language to show up there. If I can't read it, then it ain't in English. <laughs> I want to make sure there's not something in here that I need, though, uh, before I get rid of it. I don't know. I'll leave all that alone, but I don't want that... Uh,
that icon up there. Just want the uh, things that I use. I do like seeing my name up there, though. And I don't know why that's not showing. Oh, the clock is not right in here either. I'm probably going to have to do all this again in the user dawn once I get into it. I just realized I'm in as root. Oh, there you go. See, mate, yesterday I was saying how I can't see how to set the clock. And see, the mate has 12 hour. I like the weather showing up and the temperature. Yeah, we need to add. And that was the other thing. It was really weird how they had. Uh, I guess we'll have to do Fort Worth. Yeah, Fort Worth, you got, uh, that's the next closest. Alliance, Sphinx, Naval Air Station. Uh, that's probably the closest. I can't remember where Sphinx is. It might be actually closer to Hazel, but I can't remember. Central Time. Okay, very good. And then, yeah, America, Chicago, time zone. I don't want no C. It doesn't mean nothing to me. Fahrenheit. Milliseconds. <clears throat> what does MS stand for? Miles per hour. I know what that stands for. MS? I know what kilometers per hour stand is. What's MS? MS should be milliseconds for, or for all. I mean, M dash milliseconds is not written as M dash S, but I don't know. I'm just being silly because I don't know what it is. Okay. <clears throat> so now our clock is right. Anyway, I won't worry about my name. So not Maybe it's, I don't know. Maybe they dropped that function out of there, but I don't think. Well, let's see. Oops. No, my, yeah, my name's not up here. I think they dropped that function out of Make Desktop at some point. Okay, I hit F10 by accident and I brought up that menu. Okay, now what I'm trying to do is get to the screenshot folder. Oh, well, let's go to pictures. I always forget about that thing on the left there. <clears throat> yeah, and I already have a screenshot folder. I'm just going to have to tell Mate to save them. The next time I do a screenshot, I got to tell it to save it <coughs> in there. I'll say there should be a bunch of screenshots over there. It's funny as thing. This 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 uh, seems the slowest app on here seems to be this one here. Move to other pane. There we go. Now. Seems to be the file manager. Okay, so. Uh, Oh, I was in Mate User Manager. Okay, now Users and Groups. Don't really need to mess with that. Yeah. Oh, I like to have. Uh, well, I'll, yeah. Let's put it up there right now. At right click, add to panel. Let's see what all's in here. Sometimes I see things that I forgot that I like. Force quits very helpful. You quickly close an app, especially when you like on this one. It's not powerful enough to leave that uh, system app running all the time. So I can click on that force quit. You click on the little broken thing, and then you click on the app you want to force to quit. And you can put log out up there, but what I like is to shut down. I uh, think. It will ask you what you want to do. You can put the system monitor up there, but I like to do it that way. Stinky notes. I used to use them a lot, and then I quit because because 
it's so hard. Every sticky note app puts their uh, their notes file in some hidden place hard to find, and I never could remember. You know, I mean, once you find it, it's not hard, but but it's hard to remember it because every one of them uses a different place. It'd be all over the place, everywhere from your home directory to over into user bin so and so or whatever. And uh, I usually do put a divider up there. Let's see if you don't see it. Yeah, separator. That way, it separates these ones from those ones. They don't start getting together. You can lock those, but I actually get better luck out of not having them locked. But now, yeah, see if I want to. Actually, let's move that. Put them that way, I think. Now, if I click on shutdown, see, I can do it all. Let me get out of there before it does it. <clears throat> so, and logout, I think, only does logout, which is just very, just completely different, actually the opposite from the way XFCE works. <coughs> so, a lot of little things that are, can get a little confusing. Now, the weather, it may not work until after a reboot. It's not showing up right now. <coughs> Sometimes it just doesn't work. It loses connection for some reason, and then it starts working again. Well, and I just now set my time zone and all that, too, and it may not take effect yet. But uh, so anyway, this is all just this is just basic uh, setting up XFCE. Oh, yeah, administration. Now, see, it's gone, that, uh, that thing I uninstalled, that switcher. Now I only have a login window. I don't have whatever it was called, the switcher app. Control center. <sighs> it's, for me, it's just too busy. See, now this one you can make full full size, but it's too busy, and I never find what I'm looking for in here. It's got almost everything I've been looking for. I think it has everything in here. So if you like, And you can search, but sometimes I use it when I can't seem to. I, my, I get... Where I can't see straight or something, and I'll use it and I'll search. And sometimes I find what I want, sometimes I don't. But uh, I think this is the mate. Yeah, this is the one for mate uh, that wasn't in XFCE. I don't even know if I could. Sometimes you can open um, some of these settings apps and stuff other desktops within the desktop you're in and sometimes you can't yeah see there's startup applications preferred applications i think every single one of those things are in here so if you like that layout better you can use that There's one thing I would like to do, and that's to get rid of that thing I put in there, the dawn in that in that chooser screen. But uh, it, it's probably not really a big deal. You know, I do have two screenshot apps. Looks like. Oh, yeah, and the mate search tool, it's actually pretty good. It will search for files. Let's move it. That's what I've been doing nowadays, is using them both. And search for applications, that's the XFCE app finder, and then that is the mate search tool, and it'll search files, and it's actually pretty fast. And it's just built into the system, so it doesn't seem to slow the system down or anything. It's Okay, simple scan, all that stuff. I do have FileZilla, so I can transfer files from here, from and to. <clears throat> oh, I could use, well, I don't have anything. I don't have a SSH, SFTP set up on my uh, Lenovo i5, so I can't log into it to copy files over to it. I need to, I guess I ought to do that so that I can uh, back up to, to my backup drive, you know. From uh, other machines, and at some point I'm going to end up putting uh, VLC, and I'll probably up uh, that one. I will uninstall probably. I'll look at it one more time before I uninstall it. Excel. I don't remember if it's okay or not. I don't really remember. 
And the Blivet GDI is actually another, uh, um, it's like, uh, where is it? G parted. It's a partition editor. But it's still pretty new. I guess, I don't guess it's still in beta. It was uh, last year, a year before, but I think it's out of beta now. But I like Departed better still. <clears throat> so that's pretty much it. Um, this is this pretty much ready to use now. So um, let's go ahead and do a reboot and see what everything looks like on our boot screen now. Um, Oh yeah, that's what I've been doing. Okay, so we're on the camera, so I'll get out of the. I could have already done that. Get out of the. Uh, <coughs> now just get on the machine just like normal, you know, with my KVM switch, and click on shut down, and then hit restart. <clears throat> definitely I don't know why I, I just I don't know why that matters to me that much but I definitely like this that uh, splash screen better than that's what they always call them splash screens uh, I like that better than uh, the, the fall one with just a little bar at the bottom It shows it at shut down and at boot startup too. I haven't still haven't checked to see if that other kernel that was broken is working now. <clears throat> but we'll worry about that later after we see that everything is that's really important is working. Okay, so um, I can't say that file name, but that dot x i x i n n i so what a what a what a. Uh, that's the file that oh, I forgot to hit the watch the yeah I got in at the exact same place starting switch root <clears throat> you got to do it fast if you don't see the beginning you're not going to see the absolute beginning of it I don't think you might <clears throat> anyway uh, that's the file that takes care of which desktop I never knew that which desktop is the default uh, in the well, I, I don't know if it's that way. I'm a, I'll look. Well, you have to go into the root folder, I guess. I think that's only for the server version. I don't know that it's that way. I guess we can look and see. I'll look in my this is Fedora 28. I'm running, and it should be about the same. But uh, I don't think there's anything besides that one error. Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, log in as Dawn this time. And now I've all logged into the terminal as Dawn. Oh, I guess I never hit enter. I messed it all up. So I just got to tie. I just hit the one over and over and then make it tell me I made an error. Luckily, I'm on the camera. Because that showed up in plain text. But the camera's blurry, so. Start X. Yes. <clears throat> same, same chooser. Okay. Last access. Tuesday. December 11, uh, what? Tuesday, December 11, 04, 02, 
and then last excess Saturday, January 19th, 22. Okay, so I don't know. I really don't. But see, it said the, the options there are log out or new session. And I had done new session and put my put Dawn in there because I thought that would get me the username Dawn. Well, let's see what default is. Let's see if it goes to uh, username Dawn and, and uh, that's XFCE. So maybe <coughs> maybe I don't actually. Oh, I bet. Dawn has one of those files in it too. Or needs one. Well, now its background is working. Okay. I'm going to reboot it in a minute and see um, what happens if I use Dawn, you know, with the other one. Let's see, before I do anything else, I'm going to go into the file manager. I know I'm on the camera and you can't see it, but I'm, this time I remember. But uh, I don't want to take the time to get into the show hidden files. Now we might have an X. Yep, that's an exonitric. XFCE's on top <clears throat> and mates on bottom. So I'm going to leave that like it is for now. Because I want to go see what happens. I'm just going to reboot. You know that DNF updates thing didn't show up in mate but it's showing up here Let's see dawn shut down you only can shut down just like i thought and then log out you get the chance to either shut down log out or do anything i'm going to restart <clears throat> this time i'll try to hit the arrow keys real quick it gets to that point oh there we go Oh, was that shutting down? Stop job. Yeah, that was shutting down. That's all right. I'll do it again. Yeah, first you got to wait until you see the uh, the splash screen for the BIOS there. A Zeus P5PEVM. That's some other board. Well, I did it too early, but oh. I think I stopped. I stopped the countdown, so I'm gonna hit enter. If you hit a, a, any key on the key, I always use the arrow keys. You'll uh, you can select a different kernel or, or whatever you need to select there, like rescue mode or whatever. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> That's what I was trying to do. Plymouth boot screen. That was what was running, and so everything is running. So stop. Yeah started stop so and so so and so it does say plowmouth switch root service so you know this may not be yes yeah, now we're back to that one with the hardware monitor if i could figure out how to turn that off system ct oh there's a command you can run System CTL status LM sensor service for details. Now, I might could go in there and turn that off. Okay, now we're going to boot it up nice and fast. I'm logging in as Dawn and do start X. Now this time I'm going to choose the one that says Dawn and see if it by chance oh 
Now it's on top. Last excess Saturday, Saturday, January 19th. This is different each time you see it. Tuesday, January 22 was default. I picked default last time. So this time I'm going to pick Dawn. Now this is just confusing things, I think. Um, wish I could. You can add, but you can't take away. And I wish I, for the heck, the heck I could take that out of there. <clears throat> so this is xfce so the default uh desktop for root is now mate and the default desktop for dawn is xfce and the only way i can see to change it is to manually edit that file now it but this time it started up the remote desktop app so as soon as the window for it comes up or is it just going to ask me for the GPG key? Oh, it's running. I see it. I don't want to set up the key, but I do want to enable. It's almost like it's a whole different session. Didn't do that the last time. That's what's got me thrown off. But what I'll do this time is get on the remote desktop <coughs> and uh, I'm getting hungry. I'm going to have to quit just because I'm starving. Okay. Um, it is 7.38. It's not, not, not much left working time left for me unless I'm going to step too late and mess up my schedule, and I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to log in on the remote desktop. Make sure I'm desktop audio works. Okay, now. <clears throat> it's gray when you're not logged into it, and it's blue when you're logged into it. It's that little blue monitor there. Yeah, the clock's not set up. Nothing's set up. So, <laughs> you know, in one way, uh, when you... On the server, pretty much when I want to log into, well, not this, no, not always. I'm going to say uh, the only time I might want to use the desktop is to do some administration work, but really, no. I might be out in the garage and want to look something up on the internet or something, and it's already running, so I want to log in as Dawn. So, really, everything I just set up, I need to set up again. I don't think I'm going to do it right now, but the clock is one thing that drives me crazy, though. I like to look up and see what time it is. Oh, this is XFCE. Okay. 6.39 p.m. It doesn't have the time zone. Okay. It's the wrong time. Oh, Central. Oh, U.S. Yeah, start U.S. Now, come up. U.S. Central. Okay. <clears throat> okay, that's all you can fix in there. 739. Okay, now that part is good. I like that. Okay, so. thing I want to do is edit my... Uh, I think I'll um, make me a folder. Make a whole no another folder just like the other one in root. Put that file in there. And What's is this Thunar? I don't see. Uh, yeah, I got show hidden files, but I don't see. Uh, yeah, this is, must be Thunar. Okay, so <clears throat> can't do what I was. I was going to make the double pane like I would like to do. Exenectric. X. 
Zenectric is that Zen? Yeah, X usually says a Z. Usually, yeah, I think there are some words where you actually say X. But anyway, it's not my right click is not working. There. You see, this is why I hate a single panel file manager. Now I've got a jack around trying to find my folders again. I was just the folder I just came out of. I may have to put. Crusader on here so I can stop bitching about all that. Okay, now I'm just going to put that in there and then I'm going to go to Dawn. Go back to Exenitric. Zenitric. And I'm going to edit it. Since I got a backup, I'll, I'll be brave and I'll cut. Paste, save. So there's one for root, one for dawn. It's exec for execute, uh, user bin mate session, and user bin xfce4 session. So now that's the default desktop. But you should have a switcher, a chooser on the login screen. And again, I think it's all, it may be those commands I ran. I don't, I'm too tired to do it tonight, but those, I'm just so tempted to want to run those commands again that are supposed to fix it for this older BIOS, you know, get rid of, get, what I understood, it said get rid of the 16-bit, uh, I think I might have saved that information in that folder there. No, that's switch desk. <clears throat> okay, so I think I'm going to rename that. It's not really a good idea to have. I'm not going to leave a dot in there because that might throw do something weird to the system. It'll be think it's a file extension. Backup exonitric. Yeah, it's not good to have full, fully functional config files just laying around. Usually not. Okay, so now um, let's go see if there's an exonitric in my system, and I just never had any reason to ever encounter it. Nope. X session errors, X screensaver. I type dot X. We'll just look through a little further just to make sure, but that's what I thought. They have absolutely uh, configured the server differently. So whatever would work for um, it's got me really curious. So what I think I'm going to do is um, I want to get the spelling right. Let's see, I already closed that. Uh, Well, there it is right there. Okay. Properties. That's what I want. Copy. Make sure I don't mess it up. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to close that file browser too. I don't think XFCE uh, runs as well in the remote desktop as... Uh, Oh, that's App Finder. <clears throat> this, uh, I accidentally clicked the wrong thing. Yeah, that's the one I like. Uh, oh, it's KDE System Monitor. It's called just called System Monitor, but it's KDE's System Monitor that I like so much. 
Okay, now this is the documents from my backup drive. Oh, I don't want just documents. What do I want? Let's see. Seagate expansion drive. That's the only way I got a clue. Well, I could do... Let's just do it. Take forever, but I can just let it run. <clears throat> I'm going to search for dot x and entric, so it should should only show up any you know backups of those that exact file. I could have searched. Well, no, I couldn't search any root directories uh, with this in my regular user mode. So that's it uses up too many resources, and I don't see any change in resource usage. So it should be all right. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, doing a desktop video let's see I don't need well I like to be able to look sometimes my video has in the past it has just stopped making a video but when, the bigger it gets the slower it changes up here you can always watch the size change but the slower it changes like it probably takes 30 seconds to even a minute I'm not sure to go up to the next point I don't know why when it's bigger I mean it should be the same well no it is bigger yeah Point one, you know, point nine at 502 megabytes is way smaller than point nine or point seven at gigabyte range. Okay, that makes sense. That's why it gets slower. So anyway, that way I can, if I look back on it, next time I go through there, I'll, I'll, it'll remind me. Oh, okay, it went, it got bigger. If it didn't, then I'm talking to myself. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, I'm just really curious as to where that file is or if there is one like that on a normal Fedora desktop. Okay. Um, now, all those other settings <coughs> I can do if I decide to start using the XFCE desktop, I can do them later. Like, you know, uh, actually, I think I took the. Uh, session and startup that's one way to get rid of a like the things you don't want that other one was on automatically save session on logout uh, root this one's not this is not oh here we go yeah see you can make it full screen and that's something cool about xfce let's see what's in here looks like it may be all I don't know why that live install setup is there. Probably something I should just take out, but I don't want to do it yet until I'm sure everything's okay with the system. Yeah, no screensaver. So either I already did this in both usernames or doing it as root took also worked in Dawn. Not sure. That's really all I wanted to see. Oh, all the other stuff. This one here, Session and Startup, has it all. You can launch the Genome. Oh, well, you wouldn't want. Well, Genome Services and KDE Services on Startup. And it'll help things work faster, but it also uses more resources. And Genome Services, uh, Mate is a you know a fork of Genome 2. So, well, the problem is now... This is talking about Genome 3, and so there's probably a lot of differences, but it used to be beneficial because it would take forever for Genome apps or KDE, like, say, Crusader to open up. So I used to turn those on. Uh, like in my Fedora 14 system, it's probably still set with those turned on. So if you're using a lot of KDE apps, for instance, and your system's not too old and slow, uh, but you're not using KDE desktop, then you might want to turn that on and that's going to be somewhere and it should be somewhere in mate as well well i think it is anyway yeah i'm not going to keep going through all these settings again i just started doing that without giving it a lot of thought it just seemed automatic i just did it and uh now i realize i did all that in root <laughs> And it's probably Dawn user that I'm going to end up using. Uh, but I, And as mate. I'm just going to go ahead and use it as mate. My desktop background is there in Dawn. But it wasn't there in root. I wonder if that's some sort of thing. <laughs> okay. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to reboot it. And this one, 
it's still going to be searching for a good while. Maybe it'll get done. I, I let it search my whole backup drive, so I don't know. I might have should have just did like the folder that has the backups from this system. That's probably what I should have done. Matter of fact, I think that's what I should do. Let's change that. That's going to, I don't know how long that's going to take, and it's going to be working this system. Lenovo i5 Fedora 28. That should be, if it, if it, it now that's only going to be the things I back up. It's not going to be, um, no, it's already done. Let's look again. Oh, Seagate expansion drive. Let's see. I don't think I'm going to find it. I can try doing, uh, it's just a system. Yeah, let's try the whole system. Uh, some folders you can at least just look in them. You know? No. Nope. Okay, so it's not working. Well, let's... Um, I'm going to start it and then I'm going to stop it. It's not going to be in that backup drive. I just want it to be there at the backup drive next time I search. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to find that file very easily. So I'm not going to keep fiddling with that. <clears throat> um, let's close the... Uh, I want to reboot it. And what am I going to do? Yeah, now it's 2.8 gigabytes, so it's okay. Still making a video. Okay, um... Well, I know I want to reboot the, the machine again. I just completely forgot what it was, why I was going to reboot it. Oh, to get it back into Mate Desktop. Because I changed that configuration file. So now... So now uh, it should go in as, um, and I'm just going to go to using the default because that was one that says Dawn. I really don't know. They are, they seem to be the same but different. Like the last login time is different and all that stuff. That's really weird. Like I, I, that threw me off a minute ago when I saw that, the vast difference of the login time. <clears throat> I still haven't checked that other well I don't think I'll even do it tonight I'm just really getting very tired and very very hungry I guess I could at least eat me a little chocolate bar not a, ch not a chocolate bar but a chocolate nugget Gotta be careful. That little bag is light, but it's bumping into my. I'm not sure which. I've got my Seagate backup drives over there. The eight, five, and eight terabyte. And that five terabyte. If you bump that USB cable, it'll lose connection, and uh, well, that can actually cause the the uh, NTFS file system to break and have to fix it. Finishing my chocolate.
<clears throat> okay, so start X. I guess I didn't like this at all having to do this, but I guess this makes the most sense for a server. At least it does from the majority of people who run servers. They prefer to work in the terminal. They, and they, you know, they remember the commands. They're the type of people that can remember the commands, and and the, they're familiar with all the little terminal apps, <clears throat> and they um, you, they can work faster that way. Uh, so even. <clears throat> You know, most of them don't even want a G. There we go. We got mate. Most of them don't even want a GUI. You know. So I got a, a, everything I did, all that stuff I did as root, which I usually don't even bother to do that as root because I hardly ever log in as root. I always log in as my Dawn. You know, my regular users. What I always make it Dawn. And then I. Uh, <clears throat> Each one of those, you have to unlock them separately to unlock them. I'm going to leave Thunderbird there because I'm thinking, I might going to take it out of the root user, but I'm starting to think that I'm going to put some of this stuff that I know I want up there, up there right now. Well, it's all fresh on my mind. Kind of froze up for a minute there. Oh, I forgot I'm on the camera view. Again, well, at least you've <clears throat> already seen all this before. Now, open up KRFB, and then doesn't look like it was already running. <clears throat> oh, now I see the update thing. Now, I should be able to log in as remote desktop. <clears throat> On remote desktop. Yeah, it's cameras behind by a lot. <coughs> so, um, I guess what's happening is what I've been doing when I'm on camera is getting cut off. So, when I switch, unless I wanted to sit there and watch until it was done, and I don't. So, I can't. I think this tab, this tablet's starts delaying pretty soon it seems and it's behind quicker than the other phones do I don't I, I don't it may be because I'm trying to do too high quality I said that earlier but it just looks so bad at the lower quality since the way I I don't have a that tablet you know it's a 10 inch tablet only thing I have that I can put it in on to, you know, as a, tr like a, tr I don't have a tripod mount for it or anything, you know, <clears throat> so I put it in a music stand and, uh, well, it's pretty much in the same distance behind me as I do with phone, the phone, the phones, but, uh, the angle, I can't get, I don't, I don't have much way to, uh, I actually have <laughs> can't show it but I have a little uh, have a the way I have it propped up to, to I can't uh, I can't zoom in any closer and if I did it would be well it would probably look better than the phones do but I don't really have a way to uh, I haven't I'm sure if I worked very hard at it I could figure out a way to get it angled right but the way it's angled you know you can see the very top edge of the monitor you know I can't zoom in anymore without cutting off the monitor. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so now, we're, make sure we're on the desktop and everything. 
Yeah, okay, so so now I do see the backup, so I was kind of worried about that, if that was working right. It's there. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to leave that alone. It'll, it should do it automatically, you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning. And then if the machine needs rebooting, it'll reboot it automatically. What's that one? Preferences. Oh, that thing again. Yeah, that thing just makes me wonder what it is. It's not something I use. It doesn't say E E N English this time. It shows uh, just a picture of iBus preferences. That's what that is. Try to do a screenshot. Yeah, it's going to save it in the desktop. Let's see if we can save it to the right place this time. I think I may have to make a folder. I don't think there's a folder there. You're going to have to make a folder. Now it should go ahead and just go there every time. But don't see anything in here that I want to uh, be, have quick access to. But I just thought, well, I need to know what it is. Okay. Take it out of the system tray. There we go. You hit enter to save it. That's what I'm doing. <clears throat> okay, now I don't have ex something extra that I keep going. What is that? Desktop sharing, updates, firewall, volume, networking. That's very handy to have up there. And then the time. January 22, 1903. Okay, so again, this is not set. Oh, I did it in XFCE. I did it in, yeah, I did it in root user and in XFCE. I've done this thing so many times now. Show week numbers on the calendar. Show temperature, location. Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to go with Naval Air Station. Fahrenheit. Miles per hour. Very good. <clears throat> go in the control center this time and see if it's any faster to set oh I don't have the theme set in here that I like see if I can find yeah no when you search for theme you don't see it I guess it's under appearance I think I think this little thing here may I going to say I think it closes, but maybe it doesn't. I'm thinking it might be nice to have it open, but then again, it's going to be using up resources, too. It didn't seem to open up. There it is. It's, we're working on it now. I think since uh, everything's kind of responding slowly. Oh, and it, it was hiding it. Everything is just, it's responding kind of slowly anyway, so I'll go ahead and get out of there. Yeah, mist is one that I used to like. That's not the mist I used to use. It didn't look like that. It looked like it looked like this right here. That's what it looked like. I have to have that in the middle. I can't stand it. I tried to leave it. I couldn't do it. Okay, yeah, now that's the theme I like. It's the one I was trying to get out of uh, XFCE. It would never switch. 
Oh, yeah, I don't need to change the background. I like the background. Okay, nothing else I want to change. The icons should be okay. Where is the icons? Oh, customize. That's how you do the icons. What do we got here in the way of icons? Traditional, okay. That's fine. Window border, that's fine. I think those will be fine. If I have trouble with icons, I'll change it. My machine, it has, uh, I've got KRFB uh, settings, and then I've got a, a, a different, it's not KRFB, but a different, uh, I don't know if it's Vino, no, not Vino, but anyway, there's a remote desktop viewer, I'll show you. Look on mine. Okay. This one here, this viewer, remote desktop viewer, it's got the same icon as KRFB's desktop sharing settings and I don't like that so I really I just never have you know wanted to stop and mess with it but uh, I don't like that and I would like to do a different thing just because of that kind of thing okay so um, oh let's look in uh, For startup applications first. I don't know what I have. <clears throat> it may be just fine. See, now this is something I don't like. They changed this. It didn't used to be this way. You used to be able to just hit the little box and full screen it. You can't do that anymore in Mate. But you could in Mate, much less in you know Genome 2. I didn't get it that time. Either that or it's taking too long. There we go. Right, what do we got? It's a little too narrow, too, not seeing all the words. It should default to what is show you as much as it can, not as little as I can. GeoClue demo agent. Don't understand that. That may not be what I think it is. Since I don't know what it is, I'm gonna leave it alone in here. Sounds like a game or something. It says demo. That reminds me of Windows software, something that doesn't even fully function. But this is not Windows, so that might be something pretty useful. Who knows? We'll find out what it is before we take it out. That live install setup probably doesn't need to be in there anymore. Should come out automatically, I would think. No name? What the heck is that? Doesn't have anything in there. Okay, like for instance, we'll go to GeoClue and we'll click on edit. It should tell you what it is. GeoClue demo agent, user lib, X -E -X -E -C, GeoClue demos agent. Well, <laughs> it doesn't tell me much, but there you go. Why in the world? What was that? No name. Nothing. I'm going to do a screenshot of that and then I think I don't know what caused it, but uh, don't know why that's in there. Maybe some of that work I did trying to fix things. That is something I've never don't remember ever seeing happening before. Just a empty, you know, startup thing. Orca screen reader. I'll leave it. It may not be big enough to cause trouble. If the machine starts acting like it's slowing down or something, I'll, I can always take that stuff out. Power manager, that's okay. I think if you turn it off, there's no telling what would happen. Print applet, problem reporting, pulse audio, screensaver. No, we don't want screensaver. Okay. Bias V agent SSH. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I see there's different. Uh, that was something that I did not run across. I just got there going through the root one and I didn't see that unless I skimmed right over it and just didn't see it. I almost wonder if that 
is that dawn that I, well no it's I don't think if that was that dawn that I put into the boot screen but I don't think so but I'll say one thing the one reason why I went to, <clears throat> there are more controls and more settings in GUI they've been done in the GUI here in mate than there is in XFCE so it can be easier to administrate a system with mate desktop than with an XFCE and that's the whole reason I put a desktop on here is to make it easier to administrate the system you know when like I, I've said before a hundred times uh, Fedora 14 you could do dead gum near everything and anything to the system to the servers to the websites that you have on there just amazing what all you can do that's not around anymore was amazing what you could do and now it's not and I would just well I kept using Fedora 14 until I guess it was Fedora 23 and that was the point where couldn't uh, Firefox wouldn't support it anymore it wouldn't get any more updates and so you know it's going to be insecure and you, you know things weren't going to work on the internet and so that's when I had to quit using Fedora 14 because uh, well it was set up perfectly, worked perfectly, had like 3,700 applications on there. I never, ever have got to try them all yet. <laughs> and uh, let's see what we got in the startup app. Oh, I just went through the startup applications. We don't need to do that again. So I took the geo clue out of root and took, left it in Dawn, so I don't know. End up making, giving myself headaches. <clears throat> Just got through doing the the uh, let's look in the screensaver and the power manager should be off but let's make sure it's still on blank screen oh no it's not off I want that five minutes and then power manager that should be always on nope it's not this yeah, only display I'll leave that all like it is the crazy thing is I've got all uh, uh, everything so I had no problems with in Fedora 28 I had no I didn't remember having any problems with the machine going to sleep the screen going black while I was watching videos and I have a terrible problem with that in Fedora 23 it drove me nuts never could fix it I tried and tried it was a bug really I saw that there was a way to fix it in Genome 3 that they'd come out with, but no, it didn't work in Mate. I tried it. Uh, and now it's doing it again in Fedora 28. And I don't know why it started doing that. Probably some update caused it, I guess. Whatever they done wrong in Fedora 23, now they've done it in Fedora 28. It was a, I saw it all over. You know, there was plenty of different people wanting, wanting to know how to fix it. And they hated it, just like me. And uh, I saw one thing of a way to fix it with, I think, using something you could inst install Genome Shell uh, applications, fix it in Genome Shell. But I don't have Genome Shell because I don't have Genome 3, and it doesn't affect. Genome Shell is like a whole other type of shell than a normal just, uh, you know. Um, I can't really explain it, but the shell is kind of... This, in this case, it's kind of like the back end of Genome 3. Uh, and I think you, it don't, I don't think you actually have to work in the shell in the terminal to work in it necessarily. You could, but I think there was some GUI settings app you could use. But I haven't used Genome 3 ever since it came out. I just can't, can't stand it. So uh, I did go ahead and install what was necessary, and it didn't affect my Mate desktop at all. And it was something, you know, in the back end of the <clears throat> the power management that you couldn't access and couldn't change. Okay, now let's see. Saw so, screensaver there. Now when you go to look and feel, there's still yet another screensaver. One of them is, is turned on by default and the other one is not. Okay, this is the one I just got through editing. Maybe this is not another one. Maybe I didn't see that other one. Doesn't want to move for me. 
Maybe I didn't see that one. One of them is X screen saver. Yeah. X screen saver doesn't seem to be running. Don't start it up because it's actually buggy and it won't run right. Anyway, I need, but you just don't want it turned on. That's the thing. Make sure it's not turned on. Unless you want to work with trying to fix it. I used to use screen savers because I liked them. But they do use, an, especially on an old machine like this, it's going to be your server. You don't want it running 24-7 with the screensaver running and using up RAM and, and, and the, working the processor and everything else. In Windows, I used to put a vast screensaver add-on in there and I'd let it scan for viruses any time the screensaver was running. That was kind of beneficial. Okay, I said I wasn't going to do what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. I don't know why. I must be in, in settings mode tonight because I'm just keep doing it. <clears throat> yeah, see, there's two screenshots. I think that's two different screenshot apps. Uh, probably the XFCE and the Mate screenshot app, I would imagine. But uh, I'm going to fiddle around with them right now. I do need VLC installed, but there's a bunch of some add-ons and all kind of stuff you want to, so it's best to, you could just say DNF install VLC, but then you won't get everything. So go into, I'll go into uh, DNF and just search for VLC and look through and see what all I want. But I'm not going to do it tonight. I am really pleased with how well this runs on, on remote desktop, and I think the reason it responds better than the, XFCE is because it the uh, KRFB, you know, uh, what's it using? Oh, it's using uh, Tiger VNC server. That's what it uses, I think. So I think the Tiger VNC server just works better in Mate than it does in XFCE. That's what I think. Let's look at the system resources. Ah. <coughs> And uh, let's see, it's organized by name. I want it organized by what CPU. And you can't see memory in here, though. And I don't know if you can add it, but it doesn't show the memory uses. And those are the two most important things to me is CPU usage and memory usage. That's what you, what two things. The memory will actually, uh, CPU might get up to 100% sometimes, you know, but eventually it'll probably go back down unless the app has just totally gone wild but the memory on some apps will just especially sometimes on firefox some unruly web page you know screw, uh, application in the web page will uh, cause it to use a or a bug you know will cause it to use uh, keep climbing in memory uses till it fills up your ram entirely and then locks up your machine and you won't know what's happening if you can't see the memory, uh, what's using the most memory, you know. There's some CPU, C51%, this is total. CPU, and then processes, 666 memory. Oh, there's memory, 34%. So at least if you, now that's, at least you can use that. But I do remember seeing, open a window by clicking on it. I think you can add, uh, yeah, there you go. Show all processes, POD, CPU. Memory's not in there, though, which is weird. Yeah. It wouldn't, you don't want all processes. That would just be, I, I've added and taken away some before. And really, there's nothing in here else that I'm interested in. Just memory, and it doesn't show it. Uh, well, it does. Let's show it right there, but I want to know what app, the thing I want to know is what app is using the, mo the most memory, and then I can kill it in here, you know. That's why I like that other one, but then, yeah, when I install KDE uh, Crusader, you have to install some of the basic KDE backends to make it work, and so I, and that will allow me to also install um, KDE System Monitor. That's what I have on my system. <coughs> I don't have KDE full 
<coughs> desktop installed. <coughs> And I don't want it because it would be running more things in the background to work the machine for no reason. You know, or just a little single core machine. So this right here will be usable for now, though. Because if something is, it's not most of the time if something's using too much CPU, it's also using too much memory, but not, not always. Not most of the time, any actually, probably 50% of the time, it's using a lot of both. Probably 75% of the time, it's using all the memory and maybe not even all that much CPU, when you have a problem, I mean. So, at least that's, in, I'm talking about Fedora, basically. That's what I've used, you know, 99% of the time for since uh, since Fedora 5. Okay, so that's good enough. That's working. Well, I sure learned something new. Uh, I guess, well, evidently that's the way the servers are done, not the way... Uh, not, you know, obviously this is Fiddle 28. It's not going to be that much different. Uh, so... Uh, <clears throat> The way they have the desktop log, you know, set up, it's just flat different in the Fedora server than it is in the regular desktop. So um, let me get over here and reboot it again, just so, so that it won't be. Uh, it'll be all clean and fresh, and uh, I don't want it in the desktop, you know, all the time, like I was saying. So. Oh, I didn't put the reboot in this one. There's two things I want up there. The kill the unruly apps. And shut down. And I want a separator up there. That's three things, I guess. Okay, now we're going to restart it. <clears throat> I'm down for a break now, but luckily this is pretty quick on rebooting. It's way quicker than mine because I got things that are hanging it up, trying to, it's not working right. I installed a whole bunch of groups. I got install happy as I usually do. I found some new groups and I wanted to try them out. And I, st <laughs> I, uh, I haven't uh, haven't even had time to try. I don't even know what all I've got on that thing now. <laughs> okay, let's just let it boot normally. I want to see how it works. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> you know, left alone. I do need to go into the BIOS and make sure that it's set to always run. I don't know that it is. Some of my notes, let's see, probably are met null and void now. Well, the broken boot kernel, I, I'll have to wait till tomorrow. I was hoping to be done. I actually thought I might get done this evening and put it in the garage tonight, but no. I can't even think to read my notes now. But, uh, I was looking at my notes and my mind went blank, so it definitely passed quitting time. Okay, we're logged in and we should be serving up my little, my website. Okay. And, as loud as I think thought this machine, it is good, pretty loud machine. As loud as it is, it does not disturb me because <clears throat> it just makes the same noise. It doesn't change. And that other one with the fan that was going out, it kept getting making odd odd noises, you know, and getting louder and quieter and louder and quieter. And when I'd wake up 
at night, I wake up at night and have to go to the bathroom, you know, because I'm diabetic. And, uh, and uh, several, you know, you, no less than one time. Sometimes it's three times, you know. And so anyway, going back to sleep is usually pretty easy, but sometimes it's not. I, sometimes I'll lay there an hour, you know. Sometimes I have to take something, you know, some more melatonin or something to make me more sleepy because I'm I'm tired, but I can't sleep. And so anyway, laying there listening to that daggum Red Black Ballast Star was really bothering me. And uh, But I haven't even noticed. Once I get in the bed, once I get over here away from the chair, I mean, I can hear it good right now. I'm thinking about it, of course. Uh, and But when I'm listening to sound, it's kind of competing, like when I was checking my doing my sound audio video test before my videos I always do that and make sure everything's working and uh, <clears throat> it was competing with me listening to that and I was having to turn it up louder but when I'm over there in the bed um, I can hear it but it's not bothering me you know so that's good just sounds like a heater's running really <clears throat> heater with a fan or something it's kind of what it is <clears throat> okay I completely forgot what I was up to here because so for my files making a video and everything's cool there all right so um, I'm done with that and I actually I don't like that trash can being in the picture get out of there <laughs> talk thing I don't know why that bugs me but it does there's lots of junk in this picture in there it surely junks up your picture when you use that. Uh, see, there's the uh, music stand with the 10 inch tablet. And of course, the bottom of my towel over there bugs me, but it's just too much work to. It's enough. It, it's a lot of work. Just see, I have to put things away and then get it out every day. I can't just leave all my cameras out because I'm in my room here, it's my bedroom. So, uh, desk on this side, bed on that side. So, uh, I have to put things away and get them out. And so, you know, there's just. I just have to leave things, you know, do things as, uh, can't just go, uh, remodel, you know, every time I want to do a video. <clears throat> so, um, anyway, there we go. I actually did it. I actually can't. Now I know how to boot to, it's crazy. I just can't believe I've never ever in Linux, the whole time I've been in Linux, had to edit a config file just to switch which desktop I'm booting to and still that may not be the case uh, that I would actually have to do that if uh, you know like again I may try it I don't know it's working I'm, I'm kind of worried that I'll jack it up <laughs> and have trouble fixing it but uh, you know those commands that I ran yesterday to uh, be more make it more make it compatible with the uh, legacy BIOS. They seem to have no effect, but then I realized, well, I had added that switch uh, switch desk app, and yeah, it didn't have any effect because the file was not in the right place. I did. I remember that. I think I remembered it last night sometime. Sometimes I wake up and I remember things. It just comes to me like I must have been dreaming about it, you know. And so at some point I remembered it. I remember thinking about it. I, you know, after I woke up today and I kept, I finally wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. Because sometimes I think about this stuff. Matter of fact, the last few days I've had several things. That, that's how what happened. I would think about something real strong, plan on doing it, and then forget about it at the time when it was time to do it. And so finally I wrote myself a whole sticky note full of notes. <clears throat> and I only got through the top part, but that's okay because I got done. Uh, like that really means anything but uh that's uh, i only got th the top little part done <clears throat> but that's okay because it's actually working now i can actually do it it just bugged the heck out of me that i couldn't get into that made desktop and now that i saw that it actually seems to work i think it works i don't see how it could work better i've never seen i do i have noticed that uh, I swore, and I thought it must have been in my imagination, but when I'm on this Lenovo i5, it's a quad core with uh, 4 gig of RAM, and I swear it was, made, made desktop was faster in Fedora 28 than it was in Fedora 23, but I just figured it's because I had a bunch of apps uh, running in the background that I installed that was running things in the background that was slowing it down. 
But I got a, I, like I said, I installed a bunch of groups and I don't know what all I got running in the background. And it's fine. You know, it runs good. Um, although I cannot, I haven't been able to. Uh, when I very first installed Fedora 23, I could open what I used to do every day. And this is what, what's bad about software bloat. I would open up uh, Thunderbird, Firefox, Crusader, and the system monitor, and they would say open all day until I was done and shut the machine down. That's the way I liked it. And, and then on top of that, that's why I have six. Let's go on the desktop. I would have uh, Thunderbird here, Firefox here, Crusader here. I also have a certain order I want them in. And then the file, uh, the uh, system monitor, so I, I can see what's going on and, and force close anything if it acts up because it does happen. And then I would use these other two empty ones. And sometimes I would end up having something open in all six uh, workspaces or desktops. <clears throat> and uh, and after a while of doing that, you know, you, you're going to notice a difference and you're going to need to shut some things down. And if you do it for several hours, you're probably going to have to reboot. But uh, <clears throat> and that was on a dual core machine, the one that 1.8 gigahertz dual core. But that was Fedora 14. Now, fast forward to the quad core with fedora i think i never had anything older than fedora 23 on it uh, at first i could do that but after i added more things um i got to where in this last um i got to where i'll i really had to just um <clears throat> i generally run firefox crusader and the system monitor and that's pretty much it if i don't after about two hours, the machine will just about lock up and I'll have to reboot. And I'll have to end up rebooting six times in a day or something. And I still do generally, I have to reboot at least once almost every day. But I'm talking about a eight or ten hours or more of running the machine, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but, I'm blank. Um... And now when I'm making videos, though, uh, well, and so I can't, so so now I don't check my email as much as I, you know, I used to just check it. It was always open, so I would just check it any time I thought about it. Now it kind of goes out of sight, out of mind. You know, I, I have to remember to at least open my email up once a day and see if somebody wrote me, you know. Well, it used to, if someone wrote me, I would see it within 10 minutes to, to an hour at the most, you know, when I got it. Now I may not even remember uh, I might not even see it till the next day or something, or three days or so, every once in a while, especially when I'm making videos, <clears throat> because um, you know working on machines and making videos I got uh, at the same time. So uh, my goal is to get the work done, but I like to make videos. So like right now, I'm running uh, OBS Studio. We're in the first uh, space, and so. I can't run all this extra stuff, so, you know, Thunderbird's not running. That's why I usually have Thunderbird. And then if I have the browser open, well, right now, see, I keep I keep remembering because I'm making a video and it does use more resources, you can see it's always steady between, you know, 18 and 24, 25% of the CPU is always being used the whole time by OBS Studio, I mean. And if I understand that right, that is 21% of all four cores, not of one core. Pretty sure that's like the way that is. I don't know if it'll tell you that in there if you let that do that or not. I believe those are all, um, yeah, total CPU usage. See, that is all four cores. It's not. Some other apps will show you how uh, how busy each core is. Some other of these system apps. Actually, I guess this right here will do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That would tell you. There you go. You can see. See, the, the cores are uh, all at about 25%. Let's just say an average 25%. We're running from, I'm just, you know, you can't glance across fast enough to see the changes, really. But it looks like it's running from 20 to uh, 38%. And then the memory, one thing the Linux is really good at is managing memory. Uh, right now, what do we got? 90, 0.94 gigabyte of 3.7. Uh, that's memory? That's swap. Okay. I was like, what? 
Oh, memory and swap. Okay, so this is memory, and then swap is over here, 1.3 gigabyte of 3.8. It, it's uh, that the only problem you have is when when you get unruly apps that suddenly climb up to the full, oh, your whole all four gigabytes of memory, and then this is your network, you know, data that's going through. So um, that thing right there uses quite a bit of resources. I bet if you click back, no, it didn't do it. Sometimes the case, the case is card is pretty good, but some of those other like mate system monitor, it uses too many resources itself to leave it running all the time. So that's one reason why the main reason I, besides the quick, well, the main reason I really like it is the quick search right there. It says quick search, uh, but uh, the system resource usage, this one is uh, probably the least unless that other one, uh, task manager one, it's funny. That's the windows name for that kind of app. Task manager for F XFCE, <clears throat> it might use <coughs> less res uh, might use less resources than this one, but it's not near as useful because it doesn't show you. <coughs> Am I on the desktop? Yeah, the memory usage. See CPU. I usually organize. Well, see right now it's organized by memory, the top memory user, but it just so happens that top CPU user and the top memory user are the same app at this time. And generally, that's the case. At least they'll be within the top, you know, five or ten apps. So, uh, so you can glance at it and see. So anyway, the, uh, I usually try to keep the browser closed unless I'm actually using it in a video. Uh, when I'm doing a live stream, I usually just go ahead and close Crusader because it uses resources. Uh, because I can just look at my live stream and see that my video is still working. But since I'm doing just a video, I'm leaving it open just to watch and make sure my video is uh, working, you know, that it's still growing. <laughs> uh, that and I use it, you know, for other things. Like I can leave that in that folder and then go over here and open up files and look at screenshots and do all those things. So anyway, I don't know why I'm off into how I make videos. Well, how I... My point being that, um, I don't know, I think my point was that uh, the uh, <clears throat> Net Pro Max, um, 2.8 gigahertz single core with 2 gig RAM is doing pretty good, <laughs> you know, uh, on Fedora 29. That's a newer version than this. This is for Fedora 28. Now, it couldn't multitask and do all the things at the same time that this one is doing. Uh, no, that for a fact, because I've, I've tried. Uh, but what is funny is, well, this is a 2.5 gigahertz, though, so they're really close, it's, you know, the processors, as far as raw processing speed or power. Uh, but this one has four cores, and that one has one core. So, but if you're using an application, like, say, if you had an application that... Um, only you, well, I guess it would be something that didn't take advantage of multi-threading. I guess is what it would have to be. Uh, then you could, uh, you would get about the same performance out of either machine. Well, except for the memory. But if they both had two gig of memory or both had four gig, you can't put more in the net for it, It's at its max. It's at two gig. But <clears throat> uh, anyway, when I first, um, it especially bugged the heck out of me. Like they started going down in processor speed. You know, a lot of your processors especially those dual cores they're uh, you know one like that one 1 1.8 gigahertz 1.7 gigahertz and um, I just thought what in the heck this is a ripoff you know you're paying five, five to twelve hundred dollars for a machine that's not not even near as fast as your old Pentium 4 you know and um, and it's not but the multi-threading does make a difference but it depends on the app and how it works and how much it can take advantage of multi-threading. So, uh, <clears throat> because uh, there's some things, um, trying to think of what it would, I, I noticed it, I tried them out, you know, I ran some apps. Uh, the main thing all I can think of is uh, like uh, video uh, encoding. Uh, like when you edit a video and then encode it, you know, or audio, let's say you were, for one thing I do remember for sure if you're uh, if you're encoding a video or an audio file, you're just you're converting it from one format to another, encoding encoding it that way. 
you don't see a whole lot of difference between uh, <clears throat> uh, like that Pentium 4, for instance. That's 2.4 gigahertz Pentium 4. Now it has 2 gig of RAM in it. Uh, against that dual core 1.8 gigahertz with 3 gig of RAM, you don't see any difference uh, in, the, in how long it takes to encode that that video or audio file. Um, now, one time I edited a very long video on that Pentium 4 on Caden Live. I think it was, I can't remember how long it was. I saw the video about it. I, I made it. I mentioned it. I, well, I was making. I was t telling all about it in a video, and I watched a little bit of it, my video, last night or sometime, and uh, that took three or four days and nights. It was a long time, and uh, <clears throat> but uh, so I have no idea how long it would have taken. Say on this machine, I didn't even have this machine. I don't think at the time. But uh, the reason I did it is because I. I, you know, I could still be working on whatever machine it was uh, while the video was being encoded. But it bugged the heck out of me because it was, that machine is loud and makes a lot of heat. And so I had to sleep with that thing, you know, listen to it all day and sleep with it all night for two nights or three nights, you know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I didn't try it again since then. <clears throat> but, uh, but I have done video uh, encoding on them. I mean, audio encoding, and uh, I think that was what I used the last time I did that. You know, I think that, that Pentium 4 is what I used when I uh, uh, edited and uh, uh, when I um, digitized, ran, ran a cassette tape through my mixer to a computer. I believe it was that. Yeah, I think that was the only computer I had that had a good sound card. And enough memory, enough space on the hard drive, I ended up with 10 gig of data, doing all those conversions. Well, I did the my cassette, I did my cassette tape, and then I did. It was kind of a practice and and re relearning how to use the programs because I hadn't done it in years, and uh, <clears throat> and then I then I did the one for my friend, and he's the one I did 10, 10 gigabyte of data, because I did like three or four different versions for him, remixes, you know, mix, mix it this way and that way and the other trying to get the best out of it because it was a hodgepodge of songs over years of time and different uh, different uh, problems and mistakes in the audio, you know, mistakes in mixing, problems and background noise. I was trying to get it out, trying to, I was trying to normalize the volume. Uh, I was EQing it, you know. Some songs would be really loud at the beginning and then drop down in volume in the middle. Somebody was riding that slider and the way they had the recorder set up, whatever you did to the mains, that's what the recorder got too, you know. And that's one thing when you, I was talking about that and it got all mixed up and forgot and silly to even do it again now, but I was saying when you record uh, live audio and say you're just mixing it down to two channels, you know, because all you have is a cassette deck or something or back in the day when I did it or you have some kind of dual channel, two channel digital recorder or something nowadays, uh, <clears throat> you can, um, it depends on how the tape out works on your mixer, but if it's dependent upon the, a lot of them back in the 90s especially, if you, um, if you change the main output, then that changed it. Now, if you change the channel, it's going to change it. You know, you're going to have a difference in your tape either way. So what I would do was use the aux sends that are meant for uh, monitor sends usually. And I would take a row of those because those mixtures we had have three or four rows of aux sends. And I would take one whole row and I would set every channel to the exact volume that I wanted. Then there was a main output and I would set it where I wanted it. And then I would, I would do a separate second mix. I would do a recording mix. Only thing about that is <clears throat> uh, you need to, every time you do a change on the main mix, then you need to go and compensate for it on that aux. And, well, you just, one person just can't keep up with that. And the, uh, the other thing is you've got to do your tape mix on headphones. Well, when you're mixing a loud show like I was doing punk bands, and Christian punk bands, Christian metal bands, Christian rock bands, you could it's so loud in there you couldn't hear the headphones. <laughs> so... You couldn't really do it. You could get started, 
But then once the show was really going, you couldn't really do it. And so then your mix would maybe end up sounding worse than if you had just done the tape output. So, uh, but if you were able to, really you need a second person is what you need. But it would be, uh, you could get a very good mix that way. Um, <clears throat> and uh, if you did that, um, I used to do it to video too. I used to, uh, in, one, in this one church, um, I actually was able to do that. I was able to do the recording. I was, I had a video, I had a nice video camera and <clears throat> it's a Sony BVP3 I'd got on an auction. It was a real studio camera, a tube camera. It was a real studio camera and I got it in the, in the late nineties at an auction for like 350 bucks. This was a $10,000 camera and actually I didn't have a you you would what you needed was a video a three quarter inch videotape recorder uh, is what they recorded on. Well, I actually did have I did have a couple that I had gotten. Me and my friends went to this auction and he had gotten some and then he didn't want the recorders and I ended up with them and I borrowed them and then he said and I wanted to take them. I, I said he didn't want them back. That's what happened. And uh, but I I needed a special cable to get to the video out of the camera and into that deck. And also it was real big and heavy. You know, they weren't portable decks and you couldn't just carry them around, you know, like that. Um, and I was carrying my camera. Well, I ended up just leaving it up there at the church for quite a long time, but generally I carried my camera, you know, I kept, took, I didn't leave it anywhere. And that, and that, be, that tape was, that, that tape deck was, you know, this big and weighed 75 to a hundred pounds, you know, that, it was a it was a desktop model, you know. <laughs> I had two of them. I have, they're still out there in the garage. And I did oh I did have one portable deck that I wanted to use, but it was only do thirty minute tapes. They were smaller, three quarter inch tapes, but they were smaller than the big regular three quarter inch tapes. <laughs> I never did get a cable made. Uh, I had a chance when I first bought the camera. I took it to a, a professional camera shop and had them tune it. And they, the guy said he could make me a cable, and it, it wasn't a real bad price, and I just didn't want to spend the money at the time. I thought, well, I'll do it later, but I never did. So what I would do is I used an, you could, there was an RF output. It was video only, and, and it would you could just take it out of the RF and into a VCR. And what it would do, it would do 750 lines of resolution. Well, the most the VCR would record was... Uh, Generally, well, depending on, you know, how good of a VCR it was, 250, 350, 450, I think the most any a Super VHS would do was like 500, something like that, which I have one. I bought one, you know. I think I had it while I had the camera. Maybe it was later. I think I didn't have it till after. Yeah, I didn't have that till after I got rid of the camera. But uh, uh, so anyway, um, 750 lines of resolution, that's how we measured things back in the olden days instead of, DPI and you know kilobits and all that kilobits per second and all that stuff like they do now um, or uh, megapixels yeah like megapixels what they do now dots per inch and DPI that's a whole nother that's an in between <clears throat> that's a digital measurement but anyway like that's what your you know your monitor screen it'll be so many DPI but uh, or printing so many dots per inch that's how I got started printing <clears throat> but um, um, so it would do 750 lines for resolution so it put the absolute max that a, a regular VCR could do so it actually was noticeably really nice clear good colors you know very sharp so it made good looking recordings and then the audio though had to be uh, so what you do is you had to run uh, audio either from a mic to your VCR input and of course if you don't have a mixer, then your audio is going to be really low. I did do that. If you just plug like a high impedance mic straight into the back of the VCR audio inputs, and that was pretty low audio. But if you had a mixer, then it's a line level signal, so it's no problem. And so what I would do is, uh, I did for a while. I was recording the church services, and I would, uh, I would use the aux sense like I was talking about. And they didn't change things a lot, you know, so it was such a challenge. And I had a set of headphones, and I would sit there and run the camera. And I usually keep the headphones on, 
but sometimes I might take them off and then just pick them up every once in a while. But anyway, uh, I would at least pick them up and put them on and listen every so often. If, if I notice it's changing the sound, I would pick up the headphones and see if it sounded okay in the headphones. And then if it uh, needed fixing, then I'd reach over there and just change, adjust my aux in to what it needed to be. So I mixed the audio. I took video, at, you know, I ran the video camera and mixed audio at the same time. Most of the time, there wasn't much mixing to do there. Uh, other times, I tried it, like I said, at loud concerts, and I'd get it set up at the beginning, and then I would be the one mixing the show. And so the changes I did to the, um, well, now, I just remembered something. Anyway, the changes I did would sometimes ruin my camera mix because I just, uh, I couldn't quit. I couldn't, like I said, for one thing, I couldn't hear the headphones well enough to tell. I would pick them up and try to listen, but I couldn't hear them well enough. The other thing, there is two ways, though. Some boards, good boards, uh, I was using a Maxi uh, 1602, Mac, Mackie 1602 VLZ, the earlier models in those shows. It's a good board. And uh, Okay, there's pre-fader and post-fader on your aux. Uh, post-fader is whatever, uh, whatever you change on the fader, it's also going to change on the aux. That's good for monitor, well... No, it's not good for monitor mixes. It's good sometimes. <laughs> uh, it may actually be better. It depends, but it may actually end up being better for your recording because then it's it's you get an automatic change in the mix when needed, right? Uh, it but you know of course the tape deck is going to be sensitive and you may be distorting it or it may be too way too low. But it's still, I was doing. I thought my original thought was I dreamed all this up in my head, not being taught how to do this. I said, okay, I'm going to do pre-fader because then no matter what I do to the faders, it won't won't change what I've set in my mix. Uh, and it sounds good in principle, but either way, it didn't quite work unless you got somebody sitting right there monitoring it. Because, uh, well, you you know during sound check, well you need to you need to set the mix for every like I'm doing three bands, two to three to four bands a night. So you need to set it not just per, per band, but per song, you know. And you just can't just stop the show to set your recording mix, right? So I, what I had done was, well, actually what I had, I did a few times was my buddy, who knew how to run camera really well, would come up there. And I gave him, I put that camera on a, you know, 50-foot RF, uh, RF cable. And then the audio is going, in the, cause it, it plugged into the back of the VCR deck. And then he just has to be careful and don't tangle it up and don't get it yank yank the VCR off the table, you know. And um, he would go around shooting the video, and I would take I'd mix his concert sound and I would mix the sound to the uh, VCR coming out of my aux ends. Um, sometimes it, some songs that came out real good, some songs when I had to make a change, like say the guy got up and started screaming on the mic and I had to back off or something or whatever happened or maybe. We, of course, you might get feedback and have to compensate for that. Um, sometimes the mix. Sometimes, you know, like say the drums were drowning out everything else. Or sometimes the guitar is all you could really hear. Or sometimes the guy was, it, I got the vocals too loud in the in the recording, in the in the in the VCR recording, <laughs> and every, you know. Anyway, it, it was uh, again, it was um, it was a good principle, but not something you could do in practice all by yourself being a one-man show you know so uh, we always said that when you were mixing the whole show all by yourself when you really needed help not like the one-man show was in the one musician being playing several instruments but anyway um there was oh that's was it that very same no it was a newer model of that vlz that i got in another place after that that uh, i was mixing for um place called the Aquabar in Fort Worth. Uh, the guy that owned it was a Christian, and he decided to start having Christian bands in there. He was a dance club. But he decided to have Christian bands in there a little earlier before the dance crowd came in. And so he hired me, actually got paid there, uh, to come in and mix those shows. And uh, he bought, he took, I went with him to the guitar center. He knew a guy in the guitar center that gave him some good deals. And, uh, Picked out a whole new setup. And, of course, he didn't have a ton of money to spend. We had to get Yamaha cabinets. They were terrible. They were nothing but distortion. They just couldn't handle <clears throat> the volumes. Well, we had Q 
decent QSC amps, um, but well, they distorted too. If we'd have had crown amps, we wouldn't have had that trouble. But we had a VLZ, 16 channel VLZ, the newer model, uh, and we had uh, we had a house EQ, and then two. I think we had two monitor EQs and some effects and compressors. It was just just enough, just the right amount to have a good little system. And so um, <clears throat> it turned out. Uh, I think in that model they might have actually the tape output never worked good on mixers. It I guess because it was post post fader. I guess it was the main it, the the tape output the RCA tape output was straight off the mains, and uh, I think what would happen is like if you had to raise the volume on the mains, which you probably have to do sometimes, or lower it, then you know it would. Uh, yeah, I guess it would it would ruin your tape. You know, it would bring it up too loud or bring it down too low. And I don't think there was any way to change that was the problem. And then in that model, the one at the, at the they used at the Aqua Bar, I guess it was. Uh, well, I don't know exactly what you would call it, pre or post or whatever, but it was not affected when you raised the master volumes. Of course, it would be affected in your channel. You you know, but. Um, I usually didn't have to change things drastically. And it's, for instance, one time I got a really good recording. I mean, it sounded like a studio recording, but it was a little band that um, had a girl singer, had an electric guitar, but they didn't want it. She didn't want it loud and uh, had acoustic guitar or two. And I think they had drums. I can't remember. Maybe they didn't have drums. They had one, two, three, three or four members. I can't remember what all they had, but they weren't a very loud band, so there wasn't a drastic change in you know the volume levels. So you know, once I got her set up, got uh, got the sound check done. Um, well, I, I thought I like this this girl, the sound in the, the band, and uh, so I thought I'm gonna see if I can record it because I had my little I'm just using my little jam box uh, cassette deck. It had two cassettes and a one that played and one that recorded, you know, and then it had a radio and a, and a CD player in it. <clears throat> uh, my Awa jam box. I just had to take it. It finally quit working the other day. I've been using it as an amplifier and a CD player. Uh, the cassette. I've got a nice TX cassette deck that want to when I want to use cassettes, so I didn't use it, the cassette deck. It's, it all still worked. And well, till the other day, and then now the volume uh, started doing it, and then it got quit, and it started doing it again anyway. It's either nothing or full blast. So it needs, uh, maybe it needs caps. I don't know, but uh, it's. I might try one day, but I don't know if I can do it because I, I can't see the solder good anymore. And it may be something that's. If it's not caps, I I wouldn't really know how to fix it. But anyway, um, that's what I recorded it on uh, on a cassette, and uh, it turned out to be just almost you know just fantastic, and. Uh, Recorded that show and 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 out of that VLZ and um, anyway, I had somebody told me I w I had just learned don't use those tape outs they're crap you know on on all mixers <laughs> all mixers that we use the Mackies the Behringers the Yamahas the PVs <clears throat> and uh, somebody told me in that mixer it was pretty good so I tried it and it turned out it was. But again, it wouldn't be uh, perfect or really good on a band that changed, like a metal band or a hardcore band, something that changed its volume a lot. It would end up probably just overdriving that cassette and get nothing but distortion when they get loud. But uh, uh, anyway, I don't know why I got off on that. I was sitting there telling, I was sitting there saying and thinking how I need to quit, and sometimes. <clears throat> then I start telling stories. So um, it all pertains to what I'm doing. I'm sitting here looking at a, you know, an audio signal in front of me, and I'm recording audio and video and all that. It all pertains in my mind, but it doesn't pertain to making a web server work at all, does it? Okay, so I'm going to get out of here. I'm about to die now. And uh, that will be the end of, of it tonight. It's 9 o'clock now. All right, we'll see you later. Mm -hmm.